Bruins don't really want to kick it to Curtis Conway. Mike Merrill will be kicking off all week. We have been practicing kicking high kicks to about the 30 near sideline. There is Curtis Conway. That is the reason why he has already returned one for a kickoff, a kickoff for a touchdown this year. And there is that high kick to about the 30-yard line. It's taken and down at the 34-yard line. So the Trojans get good field position as the Bruins kick it away. Curtis Conway. Rob Johnson will be the quarterback, 6'4", 210, and a sophomore from El Toro High School. The backs and receivers, Estrus Creighton will start. We'll see a lot of McFadden, Wes Bender, one of the senior fullbacks in the offensive line. Tony Boselli is probably going to play. And that is good news. Offensive line has been back banged up rather on first down, a quick out. Intended for Johnny Morton, Carlton Gray on the coverage, incomplete. It'll be second down. UCLA defensively on the line. Shalinsky, Walker, and Walton. Sali Asaya is available. The linebackers, good ones. Jameer Miller leads that group. And the healthy secondary with Carl Greenwood back. Gray Greenwood, Goodwin, and Henderson. Rob Johnson on second down. From the 35, out of the eye. Pitch it to Creighton. Cuts back in, he's stuck there by Othello Henderson. After about a two-yard gain, it will be third down for USC. Well, Othello Henderson, who last week had 16 tackles, a career high for him against Oregon, you're gonna see they're trying to get the ball out to Creighton. He comes up, and as soon as he turns up, Othello coming from the safety position, just coming and filling up very quickly, along with a few other Bruins. A great hit by Othello. Trojan running game, absolutely unacceptable, according to Larry Smith. There's Othello Henderson. Third down, three wides in. Conway and Morton far side, Travis Hanna to the near side. Out of the shotgun, Rob Johnson. Under pressure, throws complete. Out to midfield. Travis Hanna, 13 yards and a Trojan first down. He beat Carl Greenwood. Well, it's nice to have a guy like Conway on one side because the other receivers, Johnny Morton, Travis Hanna, get an awful lot of room to work. And you see Johnson looks left, and he gets hit right when he throws. He does a great job of standing in the pocket. But Hanna coming down with a nice first down against Carl Greenwood, who's been out a couple weeks with a hamstring. This is a quick passing game that Rob Johnson operates for USC. It'll be first down. Just the start of the game for a series. Deion Struther. Now is the tailback. Johnson. Looking deep. Conway's there. Incomplete. That was Larry Wallace, not Conway. Larry Wallace, the 6'1", 180-pound senior on the post. And Tom, that's one thing that SC just about every single route, they're going to have somebody going to the post. Absolutely. Right here, you see SC line doing a great job of protecting Johnson. He ends up, ball's probably not exactly where he wants it, but trying to get the ball to Larry Wallace just in between zone defenders. SC goes five deep in their wideouts, too. Second and ten. Johnson will throw again. Short over the middle, complete. Down to the 46-yard line. That's Yanni Jackson, the tight end, the 6'2 senior. That's his fifth catch of the year. Remember, he got a touchdown last season. Six-yard TD catch. Carrico Quinn on the coverage for UCLA. Set up another third down for the Trojans. Nice job by using, really sneaking Jackson out. They used him in pass protection, and then he just came out as an outlet receiver trying to fool the UCLA defense. Trojans have been criticized a bit, not using their backs or tight end in their passing game. But right early on, Yanni Jackson gets a reception. Now on third down and five for Johnson. Hannah and Conway near side. Johnny Morton far side. Bruins have eight up on the line of scrimmage. That's Conway in motion. Straight drop for Johnson. Under pressure again. Throws. And it is complete to Morton for a first down at the 38-yard line. And Bruin fans know all about big play Johnny Morton. Remember a couple of years ago right here in the Rose Bowl. Well, they sure do, although it's not as uh, big a play right here. Rob Johnson, though, doing a nice job. Again, standing in the pocket. He gets drilled again on third down. UCLA really having him in the position where they want him third and some some depth to go, some length to go for the first down, but Morton doing a nice job getting himself free and making the catch. 35th catch of the year for six foot, 195 pounds, senior wide out for USC. Another first down for the Trojans. They're driving. Creighton 
is the tailback. Mooney, the fullback. Give it up the middle to Creighton. Stumbles for a couple, down to about the 35. The Trojan running game basically right up the gut. Jameer Miller with the stop. This offensive line has been under fire for USC because of the lack of the running game for USC, but they have been banged up, Tom Rand. Well, they really have, suffering a lot of injuries up around Pollock. Of course, Chris Pollock with a shoulder. Baselli's had an ankle. Clay had a ball, had a knee. And really, those three guys, if they had the use of them, I'm sure be running the football quite a bit more. Joel Scott into the ball game for USC. Pitch it. Great. Has some room. Close to the first down, down to the 28-yard line. Estrus Creighton, the 6'2 senior. In Kosi Littleton, there for UCLA to make the stop. What does Creighton bring? Experience, stability to the tailback position. That's a good point, Bill. Really, Estrus Creighton, really a workhorse back there. The coaches know that it, there's a guy right there. He'll hang on to the football. He'll drive for yards, and right there, carrying a couple Bruins with him. Creighton last year, 126 yards, 21 carries against the Bruins. It's not a first down, third and short. Creighton bangs into the middle. And he should have it, although the Bruins stacked him up pretty well. Creighton gets the call again, and we will wait and see for the mark. 11.05 remaining, first quarter, no score. SC driving. Boy, UCLA, the linebackers, inside linebackers, and Kosi, Littleton, Carrico, Quinn, really fill in the middle of that A gap with the Bruin front line right there, and Creighton really pushed him outside, and it's good for the first down, though. First down, USC. Trojans at the Bruins, 27. Crowd of around 80,000 here at the Rose Bowl. It is not a sellout. SC has already converted three third downs on this drive. Creighton, a little bit of a delay. Cuts outside, has some room. Then he gets dragged down at the 23-yard line. Good play by Donnie Edwards, too, as he pursued Creighton to the outside. It'll be second down and about six from the 23. What about Donnie Edwards? The coaches at the beginning of the year told us, hey, watch out for this guy. They just couldn't keep him off the field all season long. Absolutely. If there's any, if, if there's one uh, bad part, I want to say, or if Donnie Edwards has one knock about him, he's a light. He plays light. He's not a real heavy guy, but he makes up for it with his speed. He's listed at 220. He maybe goes 210. Second down. Fullback. That's Mooney. Down about the 18. Mooney and Bender. Two seniors. The fullback chores for USC. And Kosi Littleton and Othello Henderson make the stop for the Bruins. And really built like fire plugs. Mooney, 6'1", 235, just brings the hammer right up the middle of that defense. And, and Kosi again there to put the hit on him. Mooney, 6'1", 235. He's had foot problems his entire Trojan career. Another third down, as mentioned before, Trojans have already converted three. They're looking to make it four, and they may not get there. Great, the ball carrier, and the Bruins put up the wall. Carrico Quinn, who has been brilliant the last three weeks, makes the stop for UCLA. Absolutely, O'Quinn really thrust into the lineup when Arnold Ale went out hurt with a broken tibia against the University of Arizona, but right there you see Creighton trying to get some work up the middle there, and Carrick O'Quinn just filling the gap, and putting helmet on helmet, stopping him for the fourth down. If one word can describe Cole Ford, the field goal kicker, inconsistent all season long. He missed two field goals and an extra point first half last week against Arizona. This is from 36. Line drive, got it. Wasn't pretty, but it counts for three. 8.57 remaining, first quarter, SC and UCLA, and the Trojans on top by three. We are back at the Rose Bowl, Bill McDonald, Tom Ramsey. Here on Brian Tickets, the Crosstown Showdown, USC and UCLA, and of course, SC bringing their cheerleader band and a whole lot of fans. There's Cole Ford, 36-yard field goal, has the Trojans out on top, 13 plays, 47 yards. Took up nearly half the quarter. There's the scoring drive, and Ford caps it off. His eighth field goal of the year, Cole Ford. Long time on the field, and now Ford will kick off to UCLA. SC doing a nice job that time, converting a couple big third downs early on, a third and eight, and then a third five. SC doing a nice job with their third down package. Teddy Lawrence near side, and it'll be Ricky Davis far side for UCLA returning the kick. Last year, UCLA won at the Coliseum. 
24-21 snapping Troy's four-game unbeaten string. The last Rose Bowl game, y'all remember it, the classic 45-42, the Maddox-Marinovich shootout. Both be at the Coliseum tomorrow, playing a little pro ball. Boy, that's right. You talk about a barn burner. That was just oh. a great game. And Rinovich, of course, throwing a strike to Johnny Morton in the last few seconds of play. And Maddox set a career mark, 409 yards passing that day. It was a tremendous day up and down the field. Bruins will get their chance at the football now. Cole Ford will drive into it. 8:57, first quarter. It's three to nothing, SC. <laughs> And the story of John Barnes, 6'3", 210, and a senior. This is his whole life right here. The transfer from UCSB and a most unlikely signal caller for the showdown for UCLA. Backs and receivers, Chris Alexander will start. Kevin Williams will see a lot of action. Khalid Carter, the key. La Chapelle also back. The two big tackles, Ogden and Parker, going up against Webb and McGinnis. That is a matchup to watch. It is Kevin Williams to start. We were told Alexander, it will be the senior Kevin Williams who had a sensational game last week. He gets the call. Up the middle of the goes. Bust the gut. Close to a first down up to the 30-yard line. Kevin Williams on first down. SC's defense, one of the best in the country, undoubtedly. David Webb, he's an absolute animal on the defensive line. The linebackers, the strongest part of this defense, Sam and Cop Williams, and of course we've been talking about McGinnis. And in the backfield, Jason Seahorn, you just can't keep that guy off the field. He had two interceptions last week. Gain of nine for Williams on first down. Mike Wynn to the near side. Sean LaChapelle back, far side. Williams is the single set. Fun, kick drop, throws over the middle, incomplete, intended for LaChapelle. And Tom, that's what the Bruins have to do. Quick roots against the Trojans. Absolutely. And really, UCLA coming out, mixing it up a little bit, coming out in the two-back set and running and going to a one-back set and passing, which is really against their tendencies. But La Chapelle, you see right there, might have done something to his finger, although the ribs are really the thing to be concerned about it, but his legs are 110%. We will see both one and two-back sets today for SG. Out of the one-back. On third down. Williams, first down, and pounds after the 32 33 yard line. And it'll be a first down for UCLA. Stephon Pace, the great safety for the Trojans on the stop, and not before Kevin Williams moves the chains. John Barnes, 45 for 89 coming in. Two touchdowns and four interceptions. And Kevin Williams, the leading rusher, despite missing four in the last six games. Interesting, Kevin Williams' numbers, he's about 100 carries off from where he was a year ago. He averaged six yards a carry uh, last year, rushing for over 1,000 yards. This year, 5.3 yard, yard average. I'm sure he's gonna get a lot of work today. Pac-10 leading rusher in 1991. Three wide, Barnes will throw. Pretty good protection, and it's complete to Jordan. Out at the 43 yard line, close to another first down, and I think it will be covered there by Gerald Henry, the 5'8 sophomore from Sarah High in Gardena. I think UCLA realizes they got to come out early and throw the football around, take some of the heat actually off John Barnes in the rushing game. SC does a nice job. They have a great blitz package. They don't want to get caught in third and longs, therefore come out early, get a lot of first down passing. If you're going to move the ball against the Trojans, you're going to do it through the air. They are sixth best in the nation against the rush. And right now, Kevin Williams trying to force some damage, doesn't get much. Mike Salmon comes in, number 24, the Ollie back in that Trojan D to make the stop on Kevin Williams. Williams averaging 80 yards a game. Yeah, Mike Salmon, kind of an interesting, plays an interesting position. You see the numbers right there this year for Kevin Williams, a 5-3 average, and a year ago, a 6.0 average, but still, Williams capable of breaking off the big run anytime. He's had one over 70 yards against Washington State this year. Carter and Williams in the backfield. Pitch it to Williams. Nowhere to go, and down he goes at the 41. And Mike Salmon again busts inside to trip him up. Well, Mike Salmon, you might remember, he was a safety man. All of a sudden, they can't keep him off the field. They moved him up to an outside linebacker position. And really, he, in essence, is a drop backer in pass coverage right there, though, shooting the gap and blasting into Khalif Carter, really the Bruins' best blocking back. You want to go down the family tree? His brother Tim plays for the Angels, and his cousin is actress Holly Hunter. <laughs> He's trying to be a star in his own right here at the Rose Bowl. 
LaChapelle and win on third down and long. Third and 12 from the 41. It's 3 to nothing. SC, 6-13 to go, first quarter. Barnes with protection. Out to Stokes at midfield. He's hit and dropped short of the first down. Loose football, and the Bruins may have it at the 46. Kevin Williams, the one with the hustle on the football, and that'll be a first down for UCLA. How lucky can you be? Boy, I'll be lucky right here. Barnes to Stokes, and Stokes did such a great job a week ago making some catches and running with the football right here, though. He gets stood up, and then really, you see him just rip the ball out, and Kevin Williams, who's really Johnny on the spot right there, although the, you see the first down marker not making any difference. The ball coming free, a free ball, and UCLA retains possession. Stokes had 10 catches last week, obviously a career high for him. Brian Allen in motion. Once again, it's Williams, tries left side, and gets a couple. Jeff Kopp was there, along with a couple of others. Stephon Pace for USC. So Kevin Williams, a workhorse here, the first drive for UCLA. So both teams, some significant yardage offensively the first time they get their hands on the football. SC drove down, 36-yard field goal by Cole Ford. Now this is UCLA's first possession. As Larry Smith and his defense dig in. 5-20 remaining here in the quarter. Barnes has La Chapelle to the top. Mike Wynn near side. Trojans showing blitz. Barnes still with the football throws complete. That's the tight end, Rick Daly, who hasn't had a catch in the last couple of weeks. Just two of the last five games, but he gets a 10-yard throw from Barnes. First down. Well, UCLA doing a nice job putting together a couple first downs, although they had a fumble and Barnes right there. You see a little play action fake. And as you said, get the ball out to the tight end. Rick Daly, who's been quiet. The tight end has been quiet, but in their wins, they've come to the tight end. The key today, spread the ball around. Last week, it was only Stokes that was getting the football. Now it seems as though Barnes is looking at the whole field. Absolutely incorporating the lead. First and 10, Williams. Nowhere. Great SC defense, second in the Pac-10 in rushing defense. David Webb right there, 6'4", 225, and a senior. Webb is, uh, as mentioned, so aggressive. He's the one that's uh, brought that grease paint Lone Ranger look back into vogue. There's David. Really an outside linebacker type, but he's playing down linemen. You see the look right there. Oh, that eye black. Mm -hmm. After one game this year, his whole family met him in the tunnel with the same <laughs> paint over the eyes. That's the dead end. Barnes, look out. He throws incomplete. As Barnes is hit as he throws. That's like what you have to watch out for SC. They've got 46 sacks on the air, and there's big number 55, Willie McGinnis, and now he throws a punch at Vaughn Parker, and that may cost the Trojans 15. Yeah, not, not a great move by McGinnis right there, especially right in front of the referee, and Vaughn Parker, who semi-restrained himself from retaliating, but uh, not, a, not a great play on McGinnis's part. Silly play by McGinnis as it's going to go 15 yards against SC, and that'll be a first down for UCLA. Bill, I was going to mention a moment ago, yeah, there's a personal foul on McGinnis, number 55, and really what UCLA's doing right now is controlling the football, and that's something they haven't done all year long. They're last with the Pac-10 in time of possession, averaging 28 minutes a game, and a week ago versus Oregon, they only had it for 24 minutes. And mixing the pass and the run very well here in drive number one. And Larry Smith, a little lecture, quick lecture to Willie McGinnis. A 6'6", 240-pound junior, 418. Remaining first quarter, Bruins on the move inside the SC20. Barnes, give it off to Kevin Williams. Big hole. Kevin Williams, touchdown UCLA! Tom Ramsey, what a block by Khalif Carter. Just the heat-seeking missile busting the hole out for Kevin Williams. Well, I tell you what, they don't know how many snaps they're going to have out of Khalif Carter, but right here he just crushes Mike Salmon right there. And Kevin Williams, boom, he's through the hole. He's down the field, and he's running over the inline for a touchdown. That doesn't happen often against the Trojans. They are so good against the rush. Luis Perez, who was the hero last week at Oregon, kicked the winning field goal on the tack on the extra point. And he's got it. 
And with 4-12 to play in the first quarter, Kevin Williams takes it in from 18 yards out. And the Bruins on top of the Trojans, 7 -3. As the sun sets behind the Rose Bowl, it is 7-3 UCLA over USC, 4-12 remaining, and here is the touchdown run. We see USC a little bit bunched up in the middle there. Cop number 35 caught inside and just not able to get back outside and fill the gap there. The void, and Kevin Williams fills it. Feels it good for a touchdown. UCLA holding on to the football, as you mentioned, Tom. 13 plays, both teams with 13 play drives to start the ball game. However, SC, had to settle for a field goal, and UCLA puts it in for six. Merrill will kick it again, and you can uh, bet they're going to kick it away one more time, high into the 30-yard line. Will Conway be able to get there? They won, and the Bruins out the football. The Trojans fell asleep. SC absolutely fell asleep, and the Bruins recover the football. Donovan Gallatin. The winner of the you got it, I'll take it, nobody has it. And right here, a great job, Merrill. Just puts it up in the air, and Conway, I'm not sure what he was thinking about, if someone in front of him was going to grab the ball or not, but the Bruins right on the spot, and Donovan Gallon, I'm sure they don't hear Conway right there, and you see the ball actually kicks away from him right into Gallatin's arms. So the Bruins get their second major break of the game. Stokes fumbled on the first drive, and Williams recovered. And now Conway and the kick return team messed that one up. It'll be first down for UCLA. And you want to talk about early momentum. 33-yard line for Barnes. And Larry Smith prides himself in excellent special team play. He's got to be sizzling right now. Here's Williams again. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Great defensive play. Lamont Hollenquist, another one of those versatile Trojan linebackers, makes the stop. 6'3", 225, and a senior. Boy, the Trojans have some good linebackers. McGinnis, Comp, Williams, Salmon, Hollenquist. Yeah, they really do. Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator, does such a great job. They play a version of the wide tackle six. They move guys around all over, especially helps have guys like Salmon and Hollenquist and Webb and Hintz up front. Three wides for UCLA for Barnes on second and nine, we'll call it. Here comes the blitz, and Barnes gets rid of it quickly. Intended for La Chapelle, and Barnes was hit by McGinnis. There's Willie McGinnis, 12 sacks, second in the conference to Ron George of Stanford, who has 14. And when McGinnis is coming in your face, you get rid of it, Tom. Well, I know Barnes is saying one thing. Hey, somebody put a hat on 55, because McGinnis, who's number two in the Pac-10 in sacks, coming through untouched, just drilling Barnes. UCLA thinks, however, that the Trojans are playing right into their strength. They're two tackles in Ogden and Parker, and they're basically going to be going up against Webb and McGinnis. That's a great point, Bill. Really, the strength of their offense is going against the strength of the Trojan defense. That's Darren Washington running it up the middle for UCLA for maybe two, and McGinnis was there one more time for the Trojans to stop it up. 3-18 remaining first quarter. Bruins on top, 7-3. They've got it in Trojan territory again. Darren Washington at 114 yards in his big game this year against San Diego State on that blistering afternoon in September here at the Rose Bowl. And now on fourth down, Luis Perez, 47 yards. If he connects it, it will be a career high for Perez. As the distance, a career high for Luis Perez. Or shall we say, a career long. Of 47 yards and the Bruins on top 10 to 3. Back with more from the Rose Bowl. Winner of the Rose Bowl. Beautiful night for football. UCLA 10, USC 3, and Luis Perez. Another field goal for the Bruins. And how about the reaction to number 25? Well, he's always worried about doing that dance. And right here he gets a chance to do a dance. <laughs> Lewis Perez really capitalizing on the turnover. A great play by the Bruins. His 14th field goal of the year. He has now hit nine out of his last 10. Last week, that 40-yarder to win it against Oregon. Now it'll be Courtney Kyler kicking off for UCLA. So the Bruins changing things up in their kickoff mode. And Terry Donahue. And once again, it's Conway, the one to look for, number three for USC. Curtis. First in the Pac-10 kickoff returns, averaging nearly 30 yards. And he's returned one, as mentioned, this year. Once again, the Bruins kick it short, and there's Conway. And he's loose out to the 38-yard line. And the 
obligatory pushing and shoving when the Trojans and Bruins get together. And Conway trying to get the SC fans in the corner fired up. It's 10-3 Bruins, 242 remaining in the quarter. Yeah, I said turnover earlier. Actually, it was just a misplay mm -hmm. or a muff by the Trojan return team. And right there, you see Conway, I'm sure he's just frustrated right there. He gets up and pushes Teddy Lawrence, but uh, you know, they're squibbing it, they're punting it high, they're kicking it off high to him and really creating a lot of confusion for the leading kickoff return man in the Pac-10. Conway, who scored a touchdown four different ways this year. Catching the pass, running, punt, return, kickoff return. Hannah in motion. Johnson quickly throws out, complete. Out to the 48-yard line. Well, how do you get the and ball? And a flag down, and that's going to be tacked on. Curtis Conway with the reception. Yeah, how do you get the, how many ways can you get the ball to Curtis Conway? Again, right here, the Trojans, they end up motioning outside. We're going to get, be able to see it after the penalty. Face mask, defense, five yards. Five-yard face mask First penalty. Down. That's Conway's 38th catch of the year. He averages. 16 and a half yards a catch. Right there, SC clearing out the backfield, and Rob Johnson without that, just getting the ball out to Conway, Travis Hanna out front. They're just trying to put some hats on people. Johnny Morton gets a block, and Conway, such a great runner, just finding a little seam. Any little seam uses his great speed and explosiveness and gets up the field. Carlton Gray with the face mask, and number three on number three that time. And now SC inside Bruin territory. First down at the 46. Johnson on the delay, give it up the middle. Creighton pulls his way down to the 42-yard line. Carrico Quinn, the tackle for UCLA. Esther's Creighton. And a two-yard run for a touchdown versus the Bruins at the Coliseum last season. Much more physical runner than Dwight McFadden, who we expect to see. And of course, Deion Struther also in the mix. Struther, however, has been hurt much of the year and only has six carries on the season. However, all three we should see. Creighton comes out, and now Struther is in. Struther also the physical runner. I guess he has a breakaway threat. It's McFadden, the freshman. Play action for Rob Johnson. Rolling out. Got a man complete. 36-yard line. Travis Hanna, his second reception of the evening. That's close to a first down. Well, they got a little bit of a mismatch here. Hanna, who's a sprint champion against Donnie Edwards, and Donnie Edwards is awfully fast, but they're asking a lot if they expect him to stay with Travis Hannon right there. Just a little rollout, nice, easy completion for Johnson. Hannon's roommate, of course, Quincy Watts, the gold medalist from USC. That's a fast twosome, isn't it? Travis Hannon, Rob Johnson. Bring him back up. Johnson, 13th in the nation, second in Pac-10 passing efficiency as he's under center. And again in motion, nobody in the backfield. They're going to try it again to Conway. He wanted to throw the football. He does. Rob Johnson's got it. Johnson, who caught a pass for a touchdown last week, does it again. Touchdown, SC. <laughs> Sensational stuff. 36 yards and a Trojan score. It's amazing. I don't have a great view. I see no flags on the field. Well, I tell you, the, the pass that Johnson throws to Conway so very close to not being a lateral, and I, I thought it was an up-the-field pass play myself, but Conway just does a great job throwing the back ball back across the field to Rob Johnson, and he just has like five guys out in front of him. And he goes in standing up. If you are not familiar with USC and Rob Johnson, he was catching passes from Steve Stenstrom, the Stanford quarterback now, when they were both in high school in Altoona. So Johnson had a whole year at wide receiver in high school, and he caught the pass from Deion Struther to beat, from Deion Struther last week, to beat Arizona on the trick play. So, hey, two weeks, two catches, whole home Rob Johnson. Exactly. And give credit to Conway exactly. right here. Exactly. They showed it la last week as well against Arizona. Conway, you just can't believe the effort on his part, just spinning the ball back to Johnson, and... Boy, they got some people out in front. Yanni Jackson with a big block. And Garecki puts the finishing touch on that Trojan touchdown. Minute 24 remaining in a wild first quarter. It's 10-10. Rob Johnson said during the week, hey, I'd rather throw them than catch them. But right, <laughs> right now, I'm sure he'll take that. Rob Johnson for USC from Curtis Conway, who, of course, was also a quarterback in high school at Hawthorne. 
although he didn't throw it a whole heck of a lot. Conway finally gets his touchdown pass in this year. He's almost thrown for two TDs already this year, so he finally gets one on the board. Boy. And he gets it in the UCLA game. Absolutely. Credit to number three making that play. He can beat you a number of different ways, that's for sure. Something. Number number two in all-purpose yards. I wonder if that's it adds up as an all-purpose yard. I'm sure it does. Something for everybody here in quarter number one. Cole Ford now will kick it off. Davis and Teddy Lawrence deep. This is Ricky Davis, and uh, once again, Bruins will have to take it at the 20-yard line. Curtis Conway, boy, Carlton Graves raped all over him. I think what fooled the UCLA defense, they saw maybe that he was going to throw, but he was look, looking downfield, not crossfield. Four plays, 61 yards, a minute 23. Conway to the quarterback, Rob Johnson, 36 yards. You got it, Curtis. Boy, just a great deal of deception on the part of the Trojans. A great, really a, a very ambitious play on their part. Larry Smith was saying during the week the trick plays work later on in the year because you can really get a read on the defensive tendency. Up the middle, Chris Alexander. Nowhere, Willie McGinnis. And we spoke at the top, Tom, about the SC defense bringing it to another level. That guy certainly has done that. Oh, absolutely. I got a chance before the game to speak to Ricky Hundley, one of the linebacker coaches for the Trojans. And, he, and actually, I played against Ricky. He played at the University of Arizona and had a nice pro career. And I asked him about McGinnis, and he says, just a man among boys. Uh -huh. He's that good and really bringing the goods right there on Alexander. Been especially active the last couple of games for the Trojans. Second and 13, Barnes and the Bruins. Plenty of time for Barnes. Guns it complete after the 23-24 yard line. Kevin Jordan gets his second catch of the evening. And we're going to have another flag. Things extremely testy right now on the Rose Bowl turf. And this one might go against the Bruins. Time winding down here in the quarter. It's 10-10. Kevin Jordan with the catch. That's his 18th of the year. Did not catch a ball for the first time all year last week at Oregon. Off the run. Personal foul. Offense. That's a personal foul. Bruins. And Springer, our referee. So SC stands to get the ball in great field position if they can hold UCLA right here. Absolutely. The ball, actually the penalty coming after the whistle blew. I'm not sure if it was just a late hit after... Jordan went down with the ball or not. I'm sure someone just trying to get in a last second block. And that'll drive it Interesting it. today because SC is a team defensively that likes to force the turnover. They forced three against Arizona last week. The Bruins, why they've been successful the last couple of weeks, they haven't turned the ball over on offense. Out of the shotgun on third down. Bond going long. Incomplete. Jordan. Covered by Henry. It'll be fourth down. Well, Gerald Henry, 5'8", 185 sophomore, doing a nice job running down the field with Kevin Jordan. The ball just looked a little underthrown, but you see Jordan skying for it. And both of them go down, although the ball hits. I thought the ball hit Henry. Thought he had a chance to pick it off, and sure enough, it hits him right between the two and the six, but just unable to hang on to it. Henry, who rotates with Herpin at that quarterback for SC. Good coverage on Jordan. Now Darren Shager, the sophomore, has had a great year. Fifth in Pac-10 punting with a 42.1 average. That's 25th in the nation. And they're going to kick it away from Conway. And right at midfield. Now the Bruins, true to their word, don't want Conway to get loose on special teams. 37-yard punt by Shager, but the key for the Bruins, no return. And that is the end of the quarter. 10-10, SC and UCLA. 92, the Rose Bowl, USC and UCLA. And our thanks to Tom, who, by the way, is right next to us up here in the booth. Tom Kelly, the voice of the Trojans. So you Trojan fans, you are well represented up here in our prime ticket booth. And here we are. And where is Tom? He's over this way. He's over this He's over way. Here. He's over here. Move it over. Tom is here. <laughs> Trust us somewhere. Lean out, Tom. Say hello. Yeah. Tom's being shy. <laughs> he was leaning out. 
Old TK. I was going to have a penalty on first down. I was going to hang TK out by his heels right there. He didn't trust me, though. I don't know. Yeah, an old Bruin, you might let him go. <laughs> you guys have gone around the block a couple of times. Burton on first and 15. Mike Shalinski. And when he is healthy, boy, he can be dominant. Problem is, more often than not during his career at UCLA, he's had problems. Shoulder problems a couple of years, and uh, this year with that torn thumb. Well, really, you come into this game, and all the problems are forgotten. Really, every player's out there laying it on the line. And as you said, Shalinski, when he's healthy, one of the more dominant players in the Pac-10. Very emotional player, Mike Shalinski. Second down and 19 from the 41. Johnson rolls over the middle. Conway drops it. It'll be third down. And our quarter notes brought to you by Great Western. USC on their first possession. Actually, that was not their first possession. On their first possession, they got a field goal. They did go four plays, 61 yards. Conway to Johnson, 36-yard TD pass. Yes, we're reading that right. Conway to the quarterback. UCLA had a touchdown drive. Kevin Williams rambled in from 18 yards. And Luis Perez has a career-long 47-yard field goal in the book. And right here, it's third down for SC at their own 41. Johnson throwing. Almost intercepted. Carlton Gray was there. The first team All-America all over. Curtis Conway will be fourth down. Great coverage. Really was great coverage. Carlton Gray making a fine play. Mike Shalinski really rocked Rob Johnson. But right here, the matchup of the day, maybe the matchup of the year, Carlton Gray, the All-America, great position on Curtis Conway trying to break an in route. And Johnson gets hit as he throws, but Carlton Gray right there, each number three taking a turn, muffing the ball. John Stonehouse, the punter for SC, had a pretty good year, the 1991 Prep All-America in Loyola High School. Saw La Chapelle lets it pass. Did he touch it? The referee is looking at it like La Chapelle touched it. They may give the ball to the Trojans. It's going to be to UCLA as UCLA takes it. Strange play again. Actually, the ball was touched by the Trojans up around the 25 or 30. And I'm, I'm really unsure of why they're going to spot the ball. That's where they're, they're going to bring spot. it back up. They are going to bring it back. That's the 27. A, that's the right call yep. out to the 27-yard line. Nobody knew on the field really what to do. SC didn't want to pick it up early because they wanted to let the ball roll as far as they could. But the Bruins were reacting for a moment as if La Chapelle had touched the football. But the Trojans did. La Chapelle tried to gamble. He came awfully close and does a great job backing off of it. Really, what he needs to do is get away from it. Chris Sanchez, 51 right here. You see right now, the ball's dead. It's already been touched by a Trojan, so all of this is really happenstance. Doesn't matter what happens here. However, the back judge running right down with the ball, not blowing the whistle. Confusing everybody. On first down, Barnes up the middle. Big hole, Kevin Williams. Out to the 38-yard line. 11 yards and a UCLA first down. Jason Seahorn on the stop for the Trojans. Yeah, that's what they need to do. Get the ball in the hands of Kevin Williams. He's got the hot hand, a little de delay ISO right here, and you see him just take it up the field again. And Seahorn, who's just a fabulous athlete back here, free safety, coming up from behind on Kevin Williams and breaking him down. Seahorn originally recruited to be a wide out move to defense, and boys, he sparkled, and so has Williams here. Tonight, nine rushes. Chris Alexander is in for him in the one back set. Two tight ends, UCLA. And Barnes wants to call a timeout. And we'll take a break. Be right back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California for the showdown SC and UCLA. We are tied at 10 with 1330, remaining in the first half. Stay with us. Take strokes off your game, guaranteed. Jack Nicholas's personal technique that helps straighten slices. Take strokes off your game, guaranteed. Dave Peltz's revolutionary technique that has even the pros putting more accurately. Take strokes off your game, guaranteed. Get out of sand without sweat. Greg Norman's Earth Mover secret shows you how, guaranteed. Now take two, three, four, even more strokes off your game with the secrets you'll get in your free issue of Golf Magazine. Take strokes off your game, guaranteed. Master teacher Jim McLean's simple secret to longer, straighter tee shots every time. 
Call now to get your free issue of Golf Magazine. Plus, receive your free Golf Magazine umbrella. Shoot lower, play better, or you don't pay. That's the Golf Magazine guarantee. Call now for your free no-obligation issue of Golf Magazine. If you decide to subscribe, get 11 more issues, 12 in all, for just $17.97. Plus, this Golf Magazine umbrella free with your paid subscription. Call now. I believe in the power of the beer vendor. That one man with one beer born in the Rockies can refresh thousands. I believe in the perfect pour. Frost brewing. Cold beer, warm heart. I believe that the three most important words on earth are hey, beer, man. That if a vendor can't get you your Coors Light at its ultimate refreshment level, it's a darn shame. And I believe in comfortable shoes. Anytime you hit a game winning home run, it's 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 a great feeling. I've been fortunate to do it three times and something you can't describe the fans are just electric and it's it's a very exciting feeling and hopefully it'll continue a little bit further the pirates visit dodger stadium monday night july 28th tuesday afternoon july 29th on the 28th kids 14 and under receive a dodger blue glove and a certificate redeemable for a baseball you're watching the best of usc and ucla football on fox sports west 2 just part of this showdown crowd at the Rose Bowl. I'm Bill McDonald along with Tom Ramsey. We've got the A group working with us. Dennis Benition, Jimmy Souders doing stats. Johnny Dolak, our spotter. Donna Moskal, our stage manager. And of course, Tom Kelly holding up the booth. Crowd of around 80,000 here at the Rose Bowl. It's 10-10, 13-30 remain first half. Bruins have it, it's first down and 10. At the 39, Chris Alexander is the single set. B.A., Brian Allen in motion. On play action. Bond in trouble. Down he goes, out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Great coverage by USC. That will be called a coverage sack. Willie McGinnis will get it for the Trojans. Yeah, UCLA that time trying to really run some action that SC hadn't seen before. SC actually lined up in a uh, defense that they hadn't seen before either. Jason Seahorn was up on the line of scrimmage, and then McGinnis getting credited for the tackle, throwing Barnes out of bounds. But Barnes doing probably a nice job hanging on to the football, at least trying to get something out of nothing. Bruins in a passing situation. Second down and 14 from the 35. Darren Washington and Kevin Williams split next to the quarterback, Barnes. SC brings six. Little swing pass intended for Darren Washington. That's incomplete. It'll set up a third down, and that's what the Trojans like to do. This is basically the same scheme for USC defensively. Same personnel as last year. The difference twofold. The emphasis on rushing the passer, getting upfield, always the pressure, and really the unit togetherness has really made for some exciting defensive plays for Larry Smith. Yeah, absolutely. One of the guys up front for the Trojans, Terry McDaniels, number 78, about 6'4", 290, really doing... A good job pushing the pocket right now for the Trojans. Barnes four for nine, 41 yards. He's got to get it up the field here on third and 14. Three wides for the Bruins. Good protection. Barnes. Now it breaks down. Down he goes. Terry McDaniels, the 6'4 senior, started the last couple of years now in a rotation up in that defensive line. The veteran lineman, and he gets the sack. Boy, a week ago, I watched a lot of film on the SC Arizona game, and one guy that jumped out, McDaniel, 78. You see him right there, just toss Ron Nielsen, who's a big man himself, but McDaniels, 290, right there, real active up front. And that pocket broke down quickly, didn't it? 1244. Clock now starts to run again. We're tied at 10, second quarter. Shaker will punt. Punted 10 times versus the Ducks last week, one shy of the school mark. Conway, will he get a chance? Uh-uh. Out of bounds. See where they mark it. 32-yard line. The Trojan fans booing. They want to see their star get a chance on special teams. 40-yard punt, no return. Bruins will take that every time. Conway, if you're joining us late, has thrown a touchdown pass here this evening. And now he will line up in his regular flanker position. Interesting how 
Conway, really a lot of the year, has shared time at the wideout at the flanker position with Travis Hanna. He's not in there on every offensive play. Well, I think he does so much for the whole team, though, returning kicks, punts, and everything else. They have to give him a blow. Plus, Travis Hanna, pretty good football player in his own right. Rob Johnson will pitch it to Creighton. A little stutter step and a delay, and it gets him about six yards, well, maybe five yards for Creighton as he moves outside. Donnie Edwards to stop for UCLA along with Carl Craig. Trojan offense, they love to use the isolation play. That's when the tailback is in the eye and they bust it up the middle, their second most popular rush play, toss sweep. But more than anything else this year, USC has become a cutback team. Bob Field very aware of that. UCLA defensive coordinator. Yeah, the pursuit angles that the Bruin defenders have to take are very conscious of all the cutback lanes and UCLA really having to cover the entire field. Johnson, throw. Incomplete. Great coverage again. That time, Bob Gamble, Robert Gamble, number 24. Super play. Yeah, Robert Gamble, who actually stepped in for Carl Greenwood against Oregon State and Oregon right there, making a great play, coming in just as the ball comes in, busting it up. Travis Hanna unable to come down with the ball, and you see Robert, 5'9", 170, Kansas. Johnson, 5 for 10, 42 yards. Similar numbers to Barnes. Wallace and Conway are in. Conway in motion, they want to get him the football, and he's got it with room to run, and he stumbles out across midfield to the 47-yard line. Conway in motion, they do that a lot, so he can't be double-teamed, and right there, he just found a seam and a first down, 15 yards. Exactly, all they do, they motion him outside Johnny Morton right here, and all he does is just run a little delay right back underneath, an easy pitch and catch. You see Morton got a little early block on Carlton Gray, but... Right there, Othello Henderson there to make the final hit on Conway. Curtis Conway, the reception, first down USC. For the year, 1992, Curtis Conway. He's lined up even in the backfield a couple of games this year. First and 10, Johnson straight drop. Setting up the screen. Yes, he loves the screen. Struggles. The Bruins run it well with Jameer Miller. 6'4", 233, the true sophomore. McGinnis missed three games, middle of the season with an ankle injury, but he is back with a vengeance. That's right, Jameer Miller, who right there, really SC shows screen right off the bat, and Kosey's right there as well, gets clipped by Craig Gibson to go along with it, but really Rob Johnson not, not even setting up the screen, and right there, Strother getting the ball, but Jameer Miller right on his back. Loss of five, second and 15 from the 47 of USC. We're tied at 10, 10 and a half to play clock running first half from the Rose Bowl. USC looking for their seventh win of the year. Johnson, complete. And down goes Joel Scott. Michael Williams on the coverage. My numbers are correct. That's the second catch of the year for Joel Scott, a 6'2", 210-pound senior. Although he is very talented, he just gets lost in the numbers game with Conway, Morton, Hannah, and Wallace. And the pitch of the tight ends as well. Mm -hmm. Bradford Banner and Johnny Jackson. And Rob Johnson. <laughs> Absolutely, with two TD catches in a couple of weeks. Rob Johnson threw four touchdowns himself in the opener against San Diego State. Going wrong. And he got there. Incomplete. At the goal line, Johnny Morton. You know, the last couple of years, Morton has primarily been the guy over the middle, but it's a whole new ball game for Morton. They're sending him deep a lot this year. Yeah, absolutely. Johnny Morton, I really believe, really, just a great receiver. I know two years ago he made a great catch laid out on a Marinovich ball, but again, right here, Rob Johnson with a lot of time. Morton almost comes down with it. If he comes down with it, I mean, it's just a highlight real grab, but I know I'm sure he thinks he should have caught it, but a great effort nonetheless. One for the ages in the USC-UCLA series if he comes down with it. La Chapelle standing at his own 12. La Chapelle, he at the cracked rib this year. And a good punt returner, but he gets minimal yardage here. Out to about the 17-yard line, 33-yard punt from Stonehouse. And a three-yard return. Sean LaChapelle. Bradford Banna made the play on special teams. Back with more in a moment. We're tied at 10.
Welcome to Jack in the Box. May I take your order? Yeah. Is Jack there? Just a moment. This is Jack. Mr. Box? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really hungry. I was wondering what I should get. How much you got? About a buck. I'd go for two tacos for 99 cents. They'll fill you up, and they're really good. OK, thanks. You're welcome. Please pull up to the window. At home base, you know our everyday low prices are low. Well, this week they're going even lower. You'll save with base buys throughout the store. So whatever your project is, hurry in today. Go to the base, home base, where prices aren't just low, they're lower. At home base, you know our everyday low prices are low. Well, this week they're going even lower. You'll save with base buys throughout the store. So whatever your project is, hurry in today. Go to the base, home base, where prices aren't just low, they're lower. For some time, I've been trying to figure out how I could thank all of you people who have sent me best wishes and your prayers for my recent battle with prostate cancer. It has meant a great deal to me to be hearing from so many of you. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Pennzoil for this time. I also want to tell all you men, please go have your PSA check. Join Arnie's Army and fight prostate cancer you're watching the best of USC and UCLA football on Fox Sports West 2. Larry Smith in a bout right here with friend Terry Donahue. Somebody was asking uh, Larry Smith at the press conference this week if he was buddies with Terry Donahue. He says, yeah, we get together for some bowling matches during the uh, meetings during the <laughs> summer. <laughs> bowling. Bowling. Up the middle, Chris Alexander, who gained just 15 yards and 11 carries last week after rolling for a personal best, an impressive 227 yards. Remember that a couple of weeks ago against Oregon State. Aaron Galloway made the stop for USC. The numbers for Chris Alexander has been through a lot in his brief UCLA career. He has two of the four UCLA 100-yard rushing games this year so he can be explosive second down and six from the 22 Barnes has Williams in Washington next to him inside handoff Big hole. there in Washington near midfield out to the 48 25 yards for the six foot, 203 pound sophomore. UCLA first down. For Jared Washington, who's been relatively quiet the last few weeks, really not even having played because he was fumbling every 17 times he touched the ball right there. Vaughn Parker coming around, getting a nice block, and you see Washington just taking it right up the middle there, doing a great job. The second leading ground gainer coming into the game for the Bruins, 421 yards. One thing you have to be impressed with, a much maligned UCLA offensive line earlier in the year has done a great job against this tough Trojan defense on first down. Barnes over the middle, through behind his intended receiver, Sean LaChapelle. That'll be second down. LaChapelle, the most significant return for UCLA on offense this week. Uh, from the waist down, he's about 110%. But really, it's that upper body that's a problem. He's wearing a big black jacket, and it still has the soreness around the rear. And I think one of the most important things to realize is that he's been in red. He hasn't been practicing all the time. Therefore, Barnes hasn't been able to gain the timing and just the work ethic that they, he had a year ago with Maddox and LaChapelle was such a fine combination. On the reverse. Jordan goes down. So the Bruins, a little trickery. Jason Seahorn read it well. Yeah, Jason Seahorn did a great job staying at home, and he wasn't fooled. And that's the job of the free safety. You see the ball goes to Williams on the pitch. John Barnes is out in front, and he gets a little scrape block. But Seahorn does a great job hunting down Kevin Jordan. No but, game. But we've got a penalty, and it may go against UCLA. Illegal block. So Terry goes into the bag of tricks along with the uh, Homer Smith, his offensive coordinator. Boy, has Homer done a lot of coaching this year? Probably as much or more than in the last 10 years. 
8-11 to play in the first half, 10-10, and the pace of the game has slowed down a bit after a very frantic first quarter. You mentioned all the coaching he's done. Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator for the Trojans, really mentioning that when the meeting we had with him, saying, hey, Homer's really reached into his bag of tricks, all different formations, sets, plays. You see a chop block there, the call by the referee. That'll set the Bruins back a good 15. Second down and 25 back at the 32. So the Bruins want to get some uh, a chunk of it back here to set up a shorter third down. Jordan LaChapelle to the near side. Fine. Down the field, over the middle. LaChapelle's got it complete. 43-yard line. Stephon Pace right there, though, to make the tackle. That's what the Bruins wanted. They weren't looking for first down yardage right there on second and 25. Sets down a much more makeable third down situation. Exactly like you said, Bill, just getting half of it. You don't want to go for all the Barnes with great protection. Just spinning the ball in nicely. La Chapelle, who really just adds so much, just him being on the field for the Bruins. Career receiving yards. And La Chapelle still inching up on Flipper. Now he, need 30, he needed 39 coming in to pass Flipper. I know he's awfully close. He's already reception-wise, not yardage. Uh, La Chapelle, the all-time leader, UCLA history. Webb puts on the pressure, but three. Yeah, hey, complete! J.J. Stokes, touchdown, UCLA, 57 yards! about a big target. That's exactly what J.J. Stokes was right there. Leaping, grabbing, six. Yeah, if there's one guy that's on the field that's comparable to LaChapelle in so many ways, it's this guy right here, number 18, J.J. Stokes. And expect great things from him. And right here, Barnes is the guy they beat cover two. And what ends up happening, Jason Oliver just got beat. Stokes doing a great job getting up the field, and Barnes spinning it in there. Fifth touchdown catch of the year. Second in two weeks for J.J. Stokes. Luis Perez got it. Six plays, 82 yards, and the Bruins bounce back on top. 7-13 remaining in the first half. Did you think it was going to be a defensive struggle? So did we. Brawful. And the Rose Bowl, John Barnes just spinning one to J.J. Stokes, and he beat both Oliver and Seahorn for the TD. What happens? Barnes reads cover two, and he has Stokes up the sideline, and Stokes beats Oliver on the way up, and Seahorn just gambles right here, trying to make the play, and just unable to come down with it. As you said, Bill, a huge target is number 18, J.J. Stokes, and he just prants it into the end zone. What a go-to guy Stokes has become. Not a bad throw. Yeah, you see, you see the defenders just get tied up there, and Stokes was just a step or two behind the angle that Seahorn took, and Seahorn, a receiver himself, just not judging the ball correctly. So the Bruins dig themselves out of that second and 25, and on a third down pass, J.J. Stokes rumbles in for the touchdown. And now Mike Merrill will kick it off for UCLA. Six plays, 82 yards, 218, and a big strike, 57 yards. And, you know, during the break, I said to you, who would have thought it? 7.13 to go in the second quarter, and the Bruins, who have been struggling seemingly all year on offense, have 17 points against one of the best defensive teams in the country. And here's that little pop-up kick again. Conway's over there waiting for it. And down he goes. A fellow Henderson, who has been just a demon on special teams for UCLA, makes the stop on Curtis Conway. A little mutual admiration society there. Henderson and Conway, and those are two guys it might very well go out early into the draft this year, Othello Henderson and Curtis Conway. Well, if they have an opportunity, which I'm sure they will. <laughs> uh, I'm sure their coaches are saying, don't even bring it up. But, absolutely. Uh, there's don't been a lot of speculation about both those players. Yeah. Two great players. Conway brings so much to the offense to the entire team of the Trojans. Uh, he just does so many things. He can throw the ball. He was a quarterback in high school and can throw a whole lot. Great rushing quarterback that uh, he's turned into a great receiver for them as well. Creighton and Bender. By the backs, out of the line, short side of the field. Creighton has win at the 40-yard line, then he's driven back. The progress should be up to about the 40. Othello Henderson, just another in a long line of great impact-free safeties at UCLA. Just mention the names, Easley, Rogers, Washington, Turner. In fact, Othello is only the fifth starter at that position since 1977. That's yeah, amazing. Uh, when you mentioned Easley, 
it's amazing. Othello, there's a, there are some similarities, especially when you're on 16 tackles in one game. That's controlling a football game, and really Othello has that capability, therefore making him one of the best players in the conference. That's Jackson in motion for the Trojans. Straight one more time. Has a first down, a little bit more. Near midfield, out to the 47-yard line, first down, SC. Really what SC needs to do is, just what they're doing right here, grind it out, control the football, and really just pound on the Bruins, the teams that have had success rushing the football, Arizona State and Cal, really came out and just pursued the Bruins to rushing the football, and that's what they're doing right now. If you know Larry Smith, you know he wants to pound the ball. If everything's created equal, he'd love to have that running game working. And, uh, right there, Creighton runs for the first down. Now up the middle, this is the fullback. Wes Bender, six feet, 245, the senior from Burroughs High. London Woodfin, who's coming back from an injury, and Mike Shawinski stop him there. Wes Bender, the strongest Trojan, his hobby weightlifting. Get into that gym and start lifting, something that Tom Ramsey gave up when he gave up ball. Boy, starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos just came in and gave us a punch right in the kidney. Tommy Maddox up here with us. 541. Creighton. First down, turns the corner. Creighton out of bounds, inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. Marv Goodwin pushes him out of bounds, but not before Estes has a first down for USC. Well, Creighton, not the speed burner of the bunch. As I mentioned, McFadden's a guy that really brings a lot of speed, but right here, right here, Mr. Consistency, and he, really no one on the corner for UCLA. You see, he gets by Henderson, and Marv Goodwin coming across from his strong safety position there to knock Creighton out. 32 yards for Creighton, and the Trojans on the move. They trail 17-10 to UCLA. Five and a half remaining. First half from the Rose Bowl. The Crosstown Showdown. Johnson with his backs in an eye, receivers a split. Bruins are there. Creighton again, and Carrico Quinn meets him. So Creighton, really the workhorse. But you look at the numbers for USC, and you know that they have done most of their damage this year via the air. In fact, SC's passed for 13 touchdowns coming in, run for nine. Last year, they ran for 22 and passed for just six. Bruce Walker, the injured Bruin on the play. Big Bruce, who has really had a fine second half of the season after being overweight and having a uh, hurt hamstring early on in the season, but he has uh, played himself back into shape and really has been solid. And at an opportune time, too, because Sali Asaya has been out with a bad back. And there is Asaya, number 55. Left side, down low, check him out. Bruce Walker, we'll see if uh, we can catch what happened to him. Cut block. Oh, you see it, yeah, just either an ankle or a knee, which is not good for Bruce Walker. There's just so many battles going on up front there, and another casualty there. Bruce walking off gingerly. Doesn't look good for him. 6'4", 290. He's a load. Coach Bob feel concerned with how many snaps Sali Asai was going to get coming into the ball game. He may have to play a few more now. Was hoping to only have to use Asai about 15, 20 snaps. Second and eight for the Trojans. Jackson in motion. Creighton will try that right side again. He's had success there on this drive, but not this time as the Bruins stack him up. And Kosey Littleton led the charge. Number 54, the 6'1 junior. And he must continue to come through because that is the thinnest linebacker position on the team. Really nobody to rotate in, so N. Kosey's seen a lot of work. Boy, N. Kosey, he's a guy that's bringing the goods for the Bruins. There's four Bruins tied for second in tackles. Othello, the top tackler, and Marv Goodwin, and Kosey, Donnie Edwards, Bruce Walker, all with 54 tackles coming into the ball game. So real active is that inside linebacker. Big third down, third and six coming into the game. The Trojans were next to last in third down conversions in the conference. Morton and Conway near side. Rob Johnson out of the shotgun. Johnson will run. Is he in? 
He's down to about the one-yard line, maybe inside at the goal line. No touchdown signal. Rob Johnson was looking for his second touchdown of the evening. He's going to be short. It'll be first down and goal for SC right at the goal line, 13 yards. Boy, it's hard to make the call. There's just no referee there to make one, but Rob Johnson pulls the ball down. He looks over his shoulder. Donnie Edwards was coming his way, but Othello was the... Boy, that's close. Defender who put the hit on him right at the flag, and he can't get any closer than that. If you have to make a decision from what we saw, he was in. I wonder if they're going to run a sneak right. What do you think? Saw the coach give the signal. Johnson. Sneak. No touchdown. It'll be second down. 350 clock running first half Trojans trying to tie it up it's 17 10 Bruins so the Bruins stop them on first down pretty tough to stop them four times from the one foot line Bruins dig in Trojans tight set great in the tailback Touchdown, USC. Well, you didn't have far to go, and you see, all you have to do is break the plane, and Rob did just that, and then he looked over at the referee, and still a delayed call on the referee's part. Johnson was going to get this touchdown if it took him all evening. He figured he had it on the first run, then on the second run, and right there, clearly. And you can see uh, the line judge making the call right there. Touchdown, USC. Rob Johnson has both Trojan scores. And with 3.22 remaining, second quarter, SC, if Cole Ford can uh, put it through, will be tied up. The coach's son, Corby Smith, the holder. And that's right through the uprights. Nine plays, 67 yards, took three minutes, 51 seconds. And we are tied in the showdown at 17. Don't you move. Been a fun first half, and Rob Johnson has two touchdowns for USC. One running, one receiving. He hasn't thrown one yet. <laughs> and no, we haven't, we haven't gone the toast route yet. 322 remaining here in the second quarter, 17-17. And here's the drive one more time. Nine plays, 67 yards. Rob Johnson, the one-yard sneak after it appeared he might have gotten in on that scramble earlier. But nonetheless, we're tied at 17, and now Teddy Lawrence and Ricky Davis will try to return one. They haven't been able to yet. And Creighton getting a lot of work that last series of downs. A couple of big runs. The one down the sideline with Goodwin making the hit on him. Cole Ford will kick it off for the Trojans. Still a chance to be co-champs in the Pac-10 after Washington State pulled that upset Stanford beat Cal. We could have a three-way tie at the top in the conference. Ricky Davis struggles over the 20-yard line. It'll be first down there for Barnes and the Bruins with 3.16 remaining here in the second quarter. John Barnes left UCSB after they dropped football. He's been many places during his college career and has found a late home here at UCLA. Last week out of the bullpen on the fourth series, he came in to beat Oregon. 11 for 21, 156 yards and a score to Stokes. He's filmed with the Stokes here already tonight. He throws this one complete to La Chapelle. And La Chapelle's out across the 37-yard line where it'll be a Bruin first down. Sean LaChapelle had 73 catches last year, came into this game with only 25, but of course, he's been hurt much of the year. 15 yards and a Bruin first down. And right here, the Bruins get play action to Williams, and Barnes just comes back, sets his feet, gets the ball off nice. LaChapelle does a nice little turn in, although he turns right into number five, Brian Williams, the Trojans' top tackler, puts a helmet on him. Alexander, the single set, Brian Allen in motion. First down, UCLA. Give it up to Alexander. Up the middle he goes, and he's tripped up. Good play by Mike Salmon. As he moves up to trip up Alexander. Set up a second down with 2.41 in the clock running here in the second quarter. Tied at 17. And Salmon just coming knifing in off that backer position. Making the hit on Alexander. And Alexander really never gaining momentum. 
or getting up the field. It was a relatively relaxed Terry Donahue during the week. And uh, Larry Smith seemed so during the week also. He was so pleased with the win over Arizona last week. Brian Williams, 6'2", sophomore. And here's another big play guy for SC at the linebacker position. And Williams, who gets, actually plays behind a couple great defenders, really just coming right up the middle right there. And the Bruin back, unable to put a hat on him. Webb, number 44, also at McGinnis there as well. Williams, the top tackler on the team. We look at Brian. Played very well against the Bruins at the Coliseum last year in the showdown. Minute and a half remaining, but now it's a third down and long for the Bruins. Third and 18, and Barnes calls time. They've got to get to the 47-yard line for a first down. And we'll keep it here as the Bruins now confer on a third and long. You don't want to give one up. Short in the field for SC with just a minute 28 remaining here in the half. But you have to, of course, always keep into consideration the blitzing from USC. But you told me an interesting thing during the week, Tom, that the blitz that USC brings, not a lot of bells and whistles to it. It's a pretty straightforward blitz when they bring their people. They'll bring a lot of people, but they won't surprise you bringing a corner. Well, that's that's when they're in their regular package of people. During the third down, anything can happen. I think the Trojans have one of the blessed, best blitz packages around on third down when they have their different people, different personnel on the field. They're really coming from all over the place. Classic college hoops on Fox Sports West 2. It's the best of USC and UCLA basketball. This week, the Trojans of 1993 take on Cal and a freshman named Kid. Saturday night at 7 on Fox Sports West 2. What a season for the Bruins. They won their first three games, then dropped five in a row, and it seemed as though they had fallen as deep into the abyss as you possibly can get. The two Oregon schools lent them victories and a chance for a winning season. Coach Donahue saying that's unbelievable. I'm sure they're max protecting. They still took a sack that last series. Actually, that last down they had. Third and 20, Barnes under center. And they run the football. Up the middle, Williams has some room. Scores out to the 39-yard line. But well, well short of the first down. Stephon Pace picked them up for SC. And now the Trojans will get the football. A minute 14 clock running here in the half, and we're tied at 17. Really not a bad call. Third and 18 a week ago against Oregon. Kevin Williams runs for 25 in the fourth quarter. Gives him a first down. So sure they're hoping if they spring him at the line of scrimmage, possibly he could run ahead for it, but not the case. I think, I think it's an interesting situation that SC is not calling timeout here, and UCLA is just running off precious seconds. So the Trojans not electing. Time clock uh, down to two to one, and UCLA will take it. the penalty, but the Trojans will not have the football until they're under 40 seconds remaining in the half. So an interesting uh, use of the clock by Larry Smith and the Trojans. Curtis Conway is back, but you can bet that Shager will probably kick it away and out of bounds if he is, uh, if he can. Shager has averaged at least 41 yards in eight of 10 games UCLA has played. There you see the five yards being assessed tonight. His average is only 39, but there have been no returns. Conway returned a punt 96 yards against Oregon, the longest in school history this year. Was that the shot? Shager has missed it. And SC will have great field position with 35 seconds remaining. Hasn't happened often to Darren this year, but it happened right there, only 17 yards on the kick. And the Trojans will have at least plenty of time to get in a position for a field goal. Well, it happens a lot of times when, it, when you try the directional kick, as Shaker's doing here, he just hits it off the side of his foot, and they're gonna spot it right at the 50. And as you said, a 17-yard punt, really not to, they could take a delay again or use the clock, but really the clock may work against them here. Well, SC has all three timeouts remaining. So uh, in hindsight, I even think when it was going on, it was interesting that SC did not call a timeout. They could have had uh, the football with about a minute to play. Now it's 35 seconds. They would have had it with a, about a minute, minute five, and two timeouts. Now 35 seconds and three timeouts. But the ball is a good deal. Almost 
makes the proverbial circus grab. Be second down. There was a pileup down there, and a bunch of things got twisted up, and Carlton Gray was going down, and Conway already hit the deck, but he still almost makes a grab. Rod Johnson just really un trying to unleash when you see Conway on the ground, but just unable to make the grab. Johnson on second down. 28 seconds remaining in the half. We're tied at 17. Out of the shotgun this time. Behind Johnson, he's got a fall on it at the 37. Bad snap. Clock continues to run. Are the Trojans going to exercise another timeout or just be satisfied at 17? Timeout. And I believe it's SC. No signal yet. 16 seconds remaining. Stick around at halftime. We're going to move Tommy Maddox in and get a chance to talk to him. Of course, uh, Tommy involved in the 1990 thriller. And here are the numbers from that. 45-42, USC wins it. Just a few passing yards that day. I think so. And look at uh, UCLA with 409 yards. 42 total points, both teams in the fourth quarter. Highest scoring output in series history. Marinovich and Maddox in that one. And as we mentioned, they'll both be at the Coliseum tomorrow. The way it stands now is that Tommy's going to see a little more action than Todd, but we never know. That comes up tomorrow, but right here, there's 16 seconds remaining, 17-17. And Tom Kelly is still with us. Hand in the head in hand, and enjoying the action. 17 all. It'll be third down for the Trojans, but only 16 seconds remaining, and they have another timeout. They have to get down the blue in 40 for a first down, and the Bruins have defenders all the way back down around the 30. As Conway splits to the left, along with Morton and Hannah. On third down, Johnson steps up over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Deion Strutter. And it'll be fourth down. Donnie Edwards on the coverage for UCLA as Deion Strutter, the incompletion. So the Trojans get the ball at midfield, three timeouts, half a minute to play, they'll get nothing out of it. Yeah, not a great series of downs for the Trojans, and really the bad snap cost them handily that time. Burned up a couple timeouts, and I'm sure right there, a great, missing a great opportunity, really a short punt by Shager, the ball at the 50, and really just ended up going backwards. Now UCLA will call a timeout with 11 seconds remaining. And we'll see if they set up their punt block. Team to try to make something happen here at the end. Stonehouse will be the punter. Special teams and did a good job of course last week. And the week before when Luis Perez had four field goals to win it. Really, I think you have nothing to lose here. You put 11 guys up, you try and run a block, and if you get it, if you get it, you make a big play and uh, a chance to uh, to bring one back. But let's go back to a minute 20 or so left with USC not calling the timeout and letting the time run down to 35 seconds before they got their hands on the football at midfield with three timeouts remaining. It will be naturally dissected to the nth degree if FC doesn't win the game. UCLA out of timeouts, as you see. The punter will be Stone, uh, Stonehouse, John Stonehouse, the freshman. Interesting about Stonehouse, his brother Paul, of course, punts for Stanford. His dad went to UCLA and his mom went to SC. That's a two Pac-10 family. John Stonehouse dropping back and the punter right with uh, Corby Smith and Matt Buck. John LaChapelle back at the 30-yard line, but the Bruins would love a block right here. With 11 seconds remaining in the half. Stonehouse gets it away. LaChapelle. No company. And out of bounds with one second remaining. 57 yards. So the average of Stonehouse will be helped immensely with that boot. And uh, you would bet the house right here that Barnes will take a knee. He won't go into the locker room. UCLA, of course, will get the ball to start 
the second half. They won the toss and deferred. Well, Tom over here wants him to go for it. Tom Kelly. That's it. Not Tom I Ramsey. say take a knee and get on out. Uh-huh. USC <laughs> came into this game ranked 14th in the country. USA Today, CNN, 15th in the AP and EPI Bowl. <laughs> SC actually has three defenders back at their own 40-yard line. And Barnes won't take a knee and hand it off. And that is the end of the first half. 30 minutes complete here at the Rose Bowl. 17-17. When we come back, we'll visit with Tom and Maddox, former Bruin quarterback. So stay with us. Cole Ford will kick it off to Teddy Lawrence and to Ricky Davis. 17-17, so why not? Let's start all over here in the second half. SC and UCLA. UCLA looking to make it a winning season. End the year with three wins in a row. And USC, of course, has a third aim. Are concerned. Cole Ford once again drives one through the end zone, and UCLA will start out at the 20-yard line. Your impressions of John Barnes' first half, Tom Ramsey? Well, so far, really unfazed by a lot of the rush around him, and I think given time, John Barnes does a nice job for the Bruins. I talked to Coach Rick Neuheisel before the game. I asked him just about that. I said, really, Barnes seems unfazed. He goes, you know, Rams, he really does. Even though everything's just flying around him, he has a real calm head about it. One of the reasons why Walker's not in there, Walker was very jittery in his couple of series at Oregon last week. Webb almost jumped. That's Kevin Williams getting the signal. Barnes, a little quickly out. Got it. To La Chapelle. Sean La Chapelle, minimal yardage on first down. Gerald Henry on the coverage for the Trojans. John LaChapelle, of course, the favorite target of our halftime guest, Tommy Maddox. You're never going to see those numbers from the quarterback. Well, you didn't, of course, see him all season long this year. Maddox racking up those 300, 400-yard games. If the Bruin quarterback goes for 150, it's probably a pretty good effort. Brian Allen in motion. Up the middle, trying to cut back his Williams. He's got to really scoot around the corner. He can't get there. Knocked out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Great pursuit by the Trojans. Brian Williams, the inside linebacker. Not as consistent as his buddy Jeff Kopp in the middle, but probably a little better athlete. He makes a fine play to knock Williams out of bounds. Boy, if there's anything that just stands out on this Trojan defense, it's the speed at which all the athletes run out there. And Brian Williams, no slouch, about a 4 6 40. And you see, he just has a great angle on Kevin Williams and just drills him out of bounds. But that entire defensive unit, really just full of guys who can run. Third down. Win Stokes and La Chapelle for UCLA. Barnes with good protection. Complete, but it's going to be short of the first down. La Chapelle caught it at about the 29 and a half, and then he went backwards trying to pick up the first down, and it's going to be spotted just short of the 30-yard line, which means it'll be fourth down. La Chapelle, who usually does a great job of knowing where the sticks are, and you see Seahorn just comes in and makes a great hit on him and, and hangs on and Keeps it from getting to the first down mark. Good play by Jason Seahorn. What a great kid, Seahorn. Got a chance to meet him this week. He's the kind of player that his teammates just gravitate to. And you can see La Chapelle banged up a little bit, but the Trojans will get the football here early in the third quarter. It'll be fourth down. Shager has effectively kicked away from Conway so far. Conway's going to get a chance at the 29. Down he goes. Good coverage for UCLA. And Rick Daly makes a fine tackle to tight end. 43-yard kick, 5-yard return for Curtis Conway. He averages nearly 11 and a half every time he touches the ball on a punt return. And I'm sure every time, if, when Conway does touch a ball, you, you really hold your breath. And that time, we were all surprised that he gets the ball uh, able to return that time. Just a short one, but the Bruins doing a fine job on that coverage. Rob Johnson back at quarterback. Great size. Good arm. Nice touch. Up the middle. The fullback, Mike Mooney, pounds it out near midfield. 16 yards and a first down. Mike Mooney, the 6'1 senior. Right here, Mooney, what do you do when you want to take a little load off your pass or your tailback? Right here, the fullback position getting some work, and you see the down block. 
Titus Tuiasa Sopo, big number 73, just down blocking on the nose tackle, and you see Mooney just able to spring one through. Fullback is a position that Larry Smith will have to worry about next year because both Bender and Mooney, all year long, they have been the two, and they are both seniors. And a fine job. First down. 55 remaining here in the third quarter. Creighton now, and the Trojans obviously have found something in the middle of the Bruin line. Bruce Walker is back in, but of course, Walker is hurting, and Asaya is also hurting. Trojans, David Webb being worked on. Eagle, be ready for the stud 30. Okay. Another lineman and a good one. Fellow Henderson made the tackle on that last run by Creighton. 17-17, Trojans' first drive of the second half. A real up and down season for SC. At times they've looked like national champions just about. And other times, like against Stanford, they got pounded, but it's been quite a turnaround from last year's disaster for Larry Smith and his team. Creighton appears to have the first down. And Cozy Littleton. One thing about SC this year, Tom, they haven't caught a team down. It seems as though every single week USC's playing a team that is playing pretty well against them. Absolutely, one of the toughest schedules in the nation, and it's hard in the Pac-10 conference. You really, there's so much parity in the conference this year. I feel as though each week is a, a, a real determining week when Oregon State, State can tie Arizona, and then, of course, SC beats Arizona. And just really the mixing and matching. Uh, SC played Washington tough in the early part of this year. I mean, the conference, really a lot of parity. Johnson, quick one. Conway gets away from Carlton Graves, and down he goes at the 32-yard line. Still a great pickup on first down. Donnie Edwards slides over to make the stop on Curtis Conway. You know, the key with Conway is whether or not SC uses him, you've got to think about it, and that just frees up other people. But they're looking for Conway tonight, it appears. Absolutely. Right there, you see just a little hitch pass out. Find any way they can to get him the ball. Coach Ray Doerr says, we can't get him the ball enough. And so right there, that'll tell you they're not getting the ball to him. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> Three receptions, 32 yards. He's thrown a touchdown. Second down, single set. Up the middle, close to a first down. Jameer Miller on the stop. Jameer Miller on the stop. We'll see where they spot it. Jameer, real, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I was just going to say, just a, something you had pointed out earlier in this drive, the Trojan offense really taking advantage of the front of the UCLA defense and really just hammering away on this drive. If there's any apart that's been banged up for UCLA during the year, it's been that long. The linebacker is here and there for Harold Ale up to the year with that broken leg. Third and one for USC. Trojans at the Bruin, 31. Peyton in trouble and down he goes. Loses four, fourth down. Donnie Edwards, big play, and along with Marvin Goodwin. Marvin Goodwin, <laughs> Yeah, the call's interesting. They put Yanni Jackson in fast motion. They try to get him out on the corner, but I believe it's Goodwin who ducks the tackle. You see, Donnie Edwards is the guy who makes the play nicer, and then Goodwin and Shalinski are there to put the finishing touches on. The coaches have been defending the offensive line this year, but, of course, uh, they've been under a lot of scrutiny. It is a young line. And Marv Goodwin, who's been uh, nicked up the last couple of weeks, is uh, going to go to the sidelines, the six-foot sophomore. And he has really established himself as one of the finest young DBs in the country. Well, he, did he step in adequately for Matt Darby this year? Yeah, absolutely. You talk about an impact player, and Marv Goodwin is just that, just a huge, huge big play guy. Stonehouse will punt, so the Trojans not going to get any points out of this drive. Stonehouse will try to pin the Bruins inside the 20. La Chapelle will take it at the 15. Just a 19-yard kick, but effective for USC. Because it's four field position for the Bruins, where they will start it with 10-15 remaining in the third. And we will be back with more from the Rose Bowl in a flash. Down, up the middle, nothing doing. Kevin Williams stopped by Jeff Kopp, the inside linebacker. Let's talk about Kopp. He's made the most progress this year of any Oh, those great linebackers of USC. And you and I were both commenting before the game that he reminds us a little bit of Scott Ross, who was a great one at SC. He really does. Scott Ross, Ricky Gray, Jack Del Rio, uh -huh. some of the, the better inside linebackers SC's had over the years. And really, most importantly, he's keeping a guy named Gideon Morrell on the bench. And last year, I thought Morrell was one of the top players for the Trojans. Up the middle, Williams again. Out to the 20-yard line. 
And one more time, that's Jeff Cobb tripping him up, who has been a starter since game number two. There he is. Really busted out this season. Trojans thought that he'd be a lot better last year. Really disappointed. But this year, as uh, the old cliche goes, he fulfilled that potential coming in as a 6'3", 235-pound sophomore, Jeff Cobb. Absolutely. Came in really focused. He's third on the team in tackles, 57 total tackles, plus a few more tonight. There's another third down for the Bruins. Nine minutes to play, clock running 17 all here at the Rose Bowl. In the third quarter. Fine. Lost one up. La Chapelle. Got it. 48 yard line. First down, UCLA. And you can see Seahorn, or is it incomplete? It's going to be incomplete. All right, we thought it was originally called complete. Then they came in and said incomplete. So let's uh, get it correct. It's fourth down. Yeah, the side judge makes the call. He sees the ball hit the ground, but right here, La Chapelle, Seahorn, and just a little track meet right here. And Seahorn has the ball, has his hand right where he's supposed to. You see the ball hit the ground. And Seahorn, he's seen a lot of those balls, a receiver and JC ball, and coming in now a DB, a fine play for La Chapelle. Kick is blocked. Touchdown, USC. <laughs> Zuri Hector is on the football. Luizzi, the touchdown. Hector, the block. That's right. You see Shager, number 15. You see him just blasted through. Hector was the guy who got the block. And Luizzi, number 46, recovers it in the end zone for the Trojan touchdown. Just a huge play on special teams. Luizzi with the touchdown, Hector the block. They were both there to cover it up, Cole Ford has it. So after La Chapelle almost makes an acrobatic catch for a first down, FC comes right back. The big block on Darren Shager. Touchdown Trojans at 24-17. There's Hector, he was the one that blocked the kick only the second time in Shager's career that he's had a kick blocked. 24-17, we'll look at it again. The Trojan touchdown on special teams. Well, heck, you're just in the middle of your screen right there over center, and the and the up back just doesn't get a hat on him. Tommy Bennett, number eight, not putting a hat on number 15, and he just comes right through Shager being left-footed just on the side of the kick, and Luizzi there to recover and score one for the Trojans. Special teams have hurt UCLA this year. A couple of punt returns for a touchdown. A kickoff return for a touchdown and has a block kick. So it has been an off year for special teams for the Bruins. Teddy Lawrence. Pretty good field position for the Bruins. The Trojans have the lead at 24-17. We have 8.44 remaining here in the third. That's Zuri Hector, number 15, running down on the kickoff. Following and he's still excited. <laughs> he's not thinking about contact. He's thinking about well, he kept the ball in the inside shoulder and he told coach, well, someone else made the tackle. Come on, buddy, come on. Trojans on top. Bruins with the football at the 32 yard line. Out of the eye. Kevin Williams and Khalif Carter. Right up the middle. Kevin Williams has room. Busts it outside to the 48 yard line. Kevin Williams once again following Khalid Carter. Boy, things happen when Carter's in there at fullback, don't they? 16 yards and a Bruin first down. He definitely brings the hammer, but Kevin Williams is the guy who ends up springing it. And you see right there again up the middle, just a little ISO block. Khalid Carter on cop, and you see just the great speed of Kevin Williams and McGinnis there to jump on his back after a big game, but not after a Bruin first down. Kevin Williams, 75 yards on only 15 rushes. He's got a touchdown. UCLA first down, 48-yard line. J.J. Stokes near side. Barnes in trouble. Gets out of it. Throws incomplete. And if La Chappelle can somehow get that tip pass from Seahorn, he's in for six. But Jason Seahorn, once again, a good defensive play. And Seahorn, here's a guy who didn't play football in high school. He actually played two years in the Cubs minor league baseball system. You see Pace on the safety blitz, unable to corral Barnes, but Barnes steps back up, and the ball's behind him. 
And you see LaChapelle going towards the post, but Seahorn again able to make a great play. Second down, Bruins in the eye again. You see this is split. Carter and Barnes will confer. Now the back split. 17 Once again, Barnes was looking for La Chapelle. It'll be third down for UCLA. Right there, Barnes checking off the line of scrimmage. I'm sure he just wanted an isolation rod. He knew he had man-to-man -man coverage. And he was trying to go to La Chapelle with, I believe it was a post or a hook. It was hard to tell. The ball batted down on John Barnes. Third down, UCLA. Three wides in this plan. Winning La Chapelle near side. Stokes far side. Barnes got to get rid of it. Dies incomplete. A double clutch that time from John Barnes. It'll be fourth down, and the Trojan defense is held. formation, Bill, and what they're trying to do is get the ball to La Chapelle, but Jason Seahorn again matching up with La Chapelle, McGinnis bringing the pressure, a lot of others, John Barnes is not having enough time to throw. Shager, let's see if he tries to boot it long this time instead of kicking it away. Angling it towards the corner, Shager will roll it into the end zone. And a good decision by Curtis Conway to let it do just that. 52-yard kick, however, it will come out to the 20-yard line where the Trojans will have it first and 10 when we return to the Rose Bowl. Trojans up by a touchdown. On the SC side, Trojans up 24-17. There's David Webb. And the USC defense, which just seems to have found a little new life after that block punt and the touchdown. Trojans have just held UCLA, and now they've got it first and 10 on the 20. Both can play. Johnson's got it. Tuck can go for a couple. Jameer Miller on the stop, along with London Woodfin. Second down for Rob Johnson. Last week, 213 yards, including a 65-yarder. Johnny Morton, the longest pass play of the year for USC. Throws the ball very similar to Marinovich in the fact the way he floats it in. Yeah, it's true. Not a lot, not a real powerful arm. We, we talked about that before the game. Uh, although I think with the maturation process and, and the strength he'll gain, be one of the great players. There's Mooney, the fullback, just moving the pile. Where you get Bender and Mooney here, a couple of bulls. It doesn't matter who's in there for Larry Smith. Donnie Edwards, undersized. Donnie's going about, what, 205, 210. Mooney's going 235, and he's just bruising. Yeah, right here, SC line getting off the football, and Mooney just bringing the wood. He actually runs over Marv Goodwin, one of the best tacklers the Bruins had. Mooney just full head of steam behind Loya, Gibson, Tuiasa, Sopo. And Marv Goodwin's going only 194. Any way you cut it, Mooney's got an advantage first down. Flags fly, it'll go against USC. Mooney was moving. 6.58 remaining in the third. Trojans have the lead, 24-17. We are tied at 17 at the half. Well, we have the false start, the guilty party. Pulled back there. Mr. Mooney has gained a few for the Trojans. A little anxious there. It'll be first down. First down and 15. Scoreboard says second down. It is first down. After the penalty. The tailback. That's great. We have not seen McFadden tonight. And Carrico Quinn makes the stop. We talked about Carrico Quinn. The reason why Carrico Quinn wasn't as good of a football player as he is now, he never elevated himself to the first team, and he was really doubting his own ability because of the circumstances and due to the injuries. And all of a sudden, he has been uh, thrust into the limelight. And uh, as we've mentioned, he's matured not only as a football player, but a person in the last month that he's really playing good football. Well, I'd say so. 12 tackles a week ago versus Oregon. Really active against the Ducks up in Eugene. And a 
big defensive win for the Bruins and getting a lot of action tonight as well. Of course, Brian Ty in that position out for the year with a rotator cuff injury. Yanni Jackson in motion. In motion, rather, for the Trojans. Once again, the fullback on second down. Mooney finding no daylight this time around as the Bruin Blue stacks him up. Set up a third down for Rob Johnson. We get a chance to see at his great receiving core in action. With well, the UCLA, or the USC offensive line, really getting a lot of push right now. You see him really attacking that Bruin defense. Again, the handoff to Mooney, and that's just a lot of good football right there. A lot of elbows flying around, and an awful lot of bodies. Passing situation, UCLA is allowing their opponents under 50% completions on the year. The last time they did that was in 1975. Let's see if they can stop them here. All out blitz, they get it underneath the power on the screen. And Conway's got a first down. That's a play that's worked just about every time they've run it, and they called it at a perfect time with the Bruins blitzing, and Conway takes it underneath for 14 and a first down. Yeah, absolutely. Johnson getting a lot of heat again, but this is a play they've run all year long. Conway just, again, a little delay, just dipping underneath. You got a lot of people running out. You got a lot of linemen out in front. Yanni Jackson, 88, out in front. Boy, I tell you what, Chrisman's down the field. I remember when the Trojans ran that first play, I mean, first game against San Diego State and said, this is when they've got to run all season long. Get yeah, yeah, Curtis Conway in, in space and let him do his thing. First down, near midfield for USC. Four and a half to play, clock running. Here in the third quarter, the Trojans trying to pound it. Once again, Estrus Crate averaging coming in, three and a half yards of pop. Jameer Miller getting some work, makes the tackle. One thing about Jameer, we mentioned it last week if you were with us when the Bruins played Oregon. If you're going to run the football, run it at Jameer because you don't want him trying to run you down because his pursuit is second to none. Absolutely, and SC really has its eye on a lot of cutbacks, so therefore you don't want Miller to come roaming around the corner. You'd rather run right at him and account for him. Creighton having a pretty good game in the backfield on second down. Estes will try it again. Find the first down marker. He's got it, I believe, down to about the 41 and a half. Creighton relegating McFadden to the bench for the entire evening. McFadden had started the last couple of games coming into the night. But Creighton, with that experience, that's what Larry Smith liked. He's got that big game experience under his belt. So now the running game, which has not worked all year for the Trojans, Working at the right time here. Clock continues to run, and the Bruins have a player down. And we'll check on who it is. Johnny Dolak's got the glasses on him. 3.50 remaining in the quarter, and we believe it's Bruce Walker again. He was down earlier in the game. We want to double-check that, however, that it is Big Bruce. It is not. It's a sigh. All right, Johnny. It's the other nose guard, Sali Asaya. And Asaya was thought to be out for the year with a bad back, and he might have just aggravated it. Yeah, it's amazing. Sali Asaya playing with a lot of pain, but a real trooper on that defensive line. She's a sophomore out of Oceanside. And SC very un uncustomarily coming in, ranked 10th in the Pac-10 in rushing offense, only 112 per game. But the tonight, I believe, really showing a use of force. Oh, well, he can go on and on about their problems there. Rob Johnson throwing it down the field. Incomplete. Was looking for Johnny Morton. Double covered there by the Bruins. Robert Gamble, Othello Henderson, both there. Gamble has been seen a lot of time the last few weeks with three one out with an injury. Johnson, 10 out of 19, just 80 yards. So not a uh, statistically impressive game right now for Johnson but getting the job done efficiently as we mentioned he's been gearing for this game extract a little revenge for his brother on UCLA great good hole has room sets a couple of tacklers down to the 32 yard line Estrus Creighton, the workhorse here tonight. Marv Goodwin wraps him up, close to a first down. It's interesting right here, a nice play, draw play by the Trojans. They catch the Bruins again in a blitz, and Gary Walton unable to hang on to Creighton. But he's caught up by a few of the Bruins. How good for Creighton, 101 yards. He's over the century mark, 22 rushes. 
and the Trojans have to know that UCLA is not a good come from behind team. If they can get down here, get anything, get three points, and it's going to be tough for UCLA. They're ahead by a touchdown, 24-17, clock running, 2.48. Tate again, hops over, he may go, touchdown Trojans! 32 yards for Estrus Creighton. Where they've had a lot of success, Tom, right up the middle. That's right. Creighton just hitting the hole immediately right here, taking a handoff from Johnson. And again, the offensive line, who's been at question at sometimes during the year, really doing a great job opening up the hole right there for Estrus Creighton. There's the touchdown maker. 30 to 17, 10 plays, 80 yards. Creighton 133. Goal four. Got it. And the Trojans have built their lead to 14 points. And what's turned it around in the second half, that blocked punt, back to born a moment. It's people who like tomorrow more than yesterday. People who like hard questions better than easy answers. People connecting arts with engineering, physics with philosophy. People who dream in a hundred languages. It's in the middle of a city that's the test pattern for the future at the heart of a new world called the Pacific Rim. It's a place that works like the next century is already here. Good place to be if you're going that way. He has scored 21 straight points and he lead the Bruins at UCLA 31 to 17. And that's what football's all about right there. That's a fullback space right there. That's Mooney. Love it, love it. Here's the touchdown again, and Estrus Creighton getting a chance today, Tom Ramsey, to be the guy. They're not rotating, and Creighton just getting better as the game progresses. That's right, he followed the block of Mooney, and Creighton right there just running free into the end zone and really bringing the hammer that time. 10 plays, 80 yards, 517 off the clock, and Creighton really is becoming the guy. That's just something that uh, happens with running backs when they know they're going to carry the football. They get into a rhythm, and Creighton gets his opportunities, and he doesn't miss. Touchdown for USC. Now, 2.43 remaining in the third. You think, what are the chances now for UCLA? It's got to be Barnes and through the air, because history tells us they're not going to be able to run it on USC, although they've had a little success on the Trojans tonight. I think if UCLA is able to mix it up with Kevin Williams and get some balls down the field, it'll be okay. They're going to need another big play, however. But we hark back to the block kick. 17 all. And the block kick for the touchdown has turned this entire game towards the Trojans. Cole Ford has done a nice job. He may be inconsistent kicking field goals, but he certainly does a great job kicking it into the end zone yeah. on kickoffs and not allowing any runbacks. Absolutely. The kicking game, such a big aspect. As you said, the biggest play of the game, really, I was just going to jump in and say it. You beat me to it, but that block punt. 9 for 19, 136, and a score for Barnes, but now he's on the hot seat. Inside handoff. No, Barnes still has it. Lost one up. That man caught complete daily. And that's a big play inside Georgian territory down to the 35. And a great bit of deception in the backfield by John Barnes. 45 yards and a first. That yeah, really was just a great fake carried out by Kevin Williams and John Barnes. And Barnes came, comes out and he spots his tight end way down the field. Rick Daly, he keeps telling everyone he can get deep. And right there he sure did. But... The fake just really holds. You see, it holds McGinnis right there for a moment. That's all you need. Barnes comes out, throws against his body, down the field for Daly. Big play. Well, it's to score right here on this series. We have 220 remaining here in the third. Up the middle, Williams, uh-uh. Mike Hens was waiting for him. Number 96 out of Ramona High in Riverside, the 6'3 junior, part of that three-man rotation up front. Mike Hens born in Guatemala. Ball for USC. It'll be second down. Loss of two on the play. Ball back now at the 37 yard line. Absolutely. With Daniels, Hens, Webb in there is the down guys. And really, those guys very forceful, along with McGinnis on the other end. Barnes with three wides in this plan. 
great drop. Under pressure. He's going to go down at the 46. Ball whistled dead. Fourth sack for USC tonight. And David Webb, there he is. The Lone Ranger, Batman, whatever you want. Webb in on that. Call him an aggressive player uh -huh. right here because he's matching up, guys. He's a little undersized being a defensive tackle right there. You see him loop in, and Barnes, again, Webb's not going to let go. He's got Barnes the whole way, but Barnes is not real mobile and real tough that time, not being able to see down the field and Webb right in his face. Third down and long. Bruins would at least try to get a, uh, they want a field goal attempt out of this drive. They'd have to get it down to about the 35-30 for a chance. Barnes lost one up. That's going to be overthrown intended for La Chapelle, and he gets popped as the ball is incomplete. Fourth down, and the Trojans once again have held. And the sack pays dividends, and hasn't that been the Trojan way all season long? Up 44 seconds remaining in the third. Shager will try to put it inside the 20. He's done a pretty good job this year at just that. He's had one blocked, of course, and that's been a big play in the second half. That one's headed for the corner. It's a very nice bounce for USC through the end zone. We'll come out to the 20-yard line. SC coming up with a big sack. They had 46 coming into the ball game compared to only 22 a year ago. So right there, you see how important that defensive pass rush is. Really putting a lot of pressure on the Bruins. 36 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Rob Johnson brings them back out. This is Fox Sports West 2. Sports TV that hits home. Great out of bounds at the 18 yard line. Othello Henderson makes the good play. Knock it off, knock out of Colleen, Texas. Othello Henderson. Hasn't UCLA done well in the recruiting wars down in Texas over the years? And Othello, just another one of them. Leading tackler on UCLA. Last week, I think Tom mentioned it earlier, the career-high 16 tackles against Oregon. Three times in the last four weeks, he's been in double digits. There's the SC band. I guess they lost to the UCLA band earlier this week in the fifth annual football game. Now, if I got that wrong, please correct me, SC band. Creighton again. UCLA has seen this this year, a back carrying a lot of times on them. That's right. I think it back to Arizona State. This game is so prideful when it comes down to, I'm sure all week, the SC offensive linemen have had to hear how banged up they've been, how ineffective they've been. I think they've really taken it on as a challenge and really decided to come out and rush the football, make Creighton the guy, and give him a lot of carries. You want to talk about challenges? The Bruins have one coming up in the fourth quarter because that is the end of the third. And the Trojans with two third quarter touchdowns lead ucla 31 to 17. do not go away back with the fourth and final for the rose bowl after this this labor day weekend you better get ready the fastest cars in the history of grand prix racing are making history again it's the ford los angeles grand prix the world's legendary racing cars thundering through the streets of downtown L.A. Cobras, Maseratis, Porsches, Ferraris. It's the Ford Los Angeles Grand Prix. Brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. This Labor Day weekend, be there when the most exciting cars in the world come to L.A. Remember the days when your car hit the road like it was king of the jungle? But today, your intake valves and fuel injectors are so dirty that your car is running with all the ferocity of a kitty cat. Pour in Berryman B12 Chem Tool. No expensive tune-up, no dirty hands, just quicker start, fierce performance, and ferocious power. All for about the price of a bag of kitty litter. Berryman B12 Chem Tool. It just may be the only tool you need for fierce performance. 
puts hard on us, you know. It's the stop and go. You yeah. never stop. Traffic can be tough. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You gotta sort of stay on top of it. It's tough being a cab, but uh, when you get that Chevron with Tecron, you know, it helps keep my engine clean because it's a dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to do you it. All the help. <laughs> no gasoline cleans your engine better than Chevron with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. I fantasize about Europe. The drivers over there are crazy, man. Is that right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You have to get yourself a bottle of A-Ball. And number one, my nigga, that you call A-Ball. Now I'm caught up in the rap shop. Coming with the boot that growls like a tiger. If one ain't enough, two will be a lot flyer. Need a tongue, please, or don't sell a board. These are A-Ball's even better. Ice cold from the free. You grab as many as you want, G. Cause we got the best smoke liquor in the country. Round and round it goes. Drink it up, drink it up. Straight from the bottle, no need for the cup. So all you want the booze, better act like you know. Who's number one? So please, I gotta go. That you call a you're watching the best of USC and UCLA football on Fox Sports West 2. The Rose Bowl, where we're at, it's the Crosstown Showdown, USC and UCLA, 31-17. Trojans on top, and our quarter notes brought to you by Great Western Bank. Zuri Hector blocked a punt. SC recovered, touchdown. And Estrus Creighton ran one in from 32 yards a 14 point quarter for usc total yards sc at 118 ucla had a chance on their last drive they could not get any points and there is tom ramsey's fave gypsy boots he just right. keeps rolling along another ex-quarterback there huh <laughs> In motion, Conway. Johnson under heavy pressure, releases early, and it's incomplete. Johnson was really drilled by Donnie Edwards. And Donnie Edwards again looping around and right in front of Rob Johnson's face and really taking a good shot at him just as he's releasing the football. Actually, yeah, it is. Actually, it was Donovan Gallatin. I'm sorry about that. Gallatin, give credit where credit's due, and Gallatin, number 26 knifing through and really putting a big shot on Johnson. Stonehouse to punt. He has a long of 59 this year. La Chapelle. We'll watch this one bounce. And it is finally down at about the 31 and a half. 46 yard boot. Freshman. He's got a long career ahead. Larry Smith just loves those special teams. Personally, hands-on with special teams. Yeah, absolutely. Commenting on the Arizona game a week ago, the three phases he felt the Trojans won outright. Kicking game, defensive, and offensive. And I'd have to agree with him. The kicking game becomes such an integral component of the game. We've seen it again tonight. Here is where USC's defense has been strongest all year in the fourth quarter. You might remember the Cal game when they forced a couple of turnovers to win that game. And they really had a great effort against Arizona last week, too. Incomplete, intended for Mike Wynn. And while we have a chance, we want to uh, make mention of Mike Wynn's outstanding season for UCLA. He's really an unsung guy, I think, in that receiver core. I know you like him a lot, Tom Ramsey. Absolutely. Mike Wynn's got a great set of legs on him. Really runs great pass routes, and I believe he didn't get a lot of time a year ago when I when I thought he'd get a little more time. He's got the time this year, and I think next year he'll just be a great receiver for the Bruins. Barnes under 50%, 10 out of 22, but he's got 181 yards. Sean LaChapelle needs just two yards to become the all-time leading receiver in yards in UCLA history. Let's see if he can get it here in the fourth quarter. Up the middle. This is close to a first down. It is a first down. Bowling his way is Kevin Williams. What a great run by the six-foot senior. Kevin Williams. Well, Kevin Williams being a senior, not having a chance to play in another one of these ball games, and comes off the big game of a year ago, and right here again, following Novitski, the polling guard, and just really running awfully hard up the field. See Mike wins right there as well, trying to get out of the way, but Kevin Williams dragging a few defenders with him. Seventh place all time, UCLA rushing Kevin Williams, 15 yards that time, and a first down. We will continue to update you on the clock situation throughout this quarter. 13 19 clock running. SC up by two scores, two touchdowns. Barnes, a little quick one outside. That's La Chapelle, and a flag goes down. A late flag, and that'll go against 
USC. And on that reception, John LaChapelle is now the all-time leading receiver yardage-wise in UCLA history, five yards. So congratulations, Sean LaChapelle, and another record for number 88. But he took a lick in that time in those ribs. It's a personal foul face mask against the Trojans, and it might be the last catch he makes tonight. LaChapelle again taking a shot on those injured ribs he has, the crack ribs, and doesn't look good for the Bruins, although it's fitting that he does get the all-time career yardage mark right here. Again, a quick screen out. Barnes fires it out, and there's a face mask here on Seahorn, about rips his head off and paces there to put the big hit on his ribs. You see Seahorn, just a real flagrant foul there. Just flagrant. And Pace there to put the finishing touch on him. That's significant yardage down to the 34. UCLA once again in Trojan territory. They were there just a few moments ago. Didn't get anything out of it. Barnes will throw. Has it on his hip. Over the middle. Complete. Bailey's got it. Out of bounds. So these crossing patterns working now for UCLA. Jason Oliver. 5'11 junior, three-year starter. And USC on the cover. That's really Daly, just a little crossing rod underneath, and Barnes being able to pick him up. With Ross Appel out of the game now, the Bruins having to work incorporate the tight end a little bit more. La Chapelle hurting on the sideline. Missed the last couple of weeks. Originally hurt the ribs back in the Arizona game. That's amazing. The guy plays with such hard out the last couple of weeks, but came back for the SC game. The Arizona game was in the first week in October. Good play in the backfield, and down goes Kevin Williams. David Webb tripped him up. David Webb seems to be uh, possibly hurt. Now he's all right. Maybe his hand. And there's La Chapelle. Well, that was the first week in October that La Chapelle was hurt, and he tried to come back periodically and just aggravated the ribs. He actually played the, the following week, which surprised us. And, and I think that aggravated it more than it helped it at all. And LaChapelle admits, sit out a couple weeks. he admits that he, that he might have come back too soon. And it really hampered him the entire season. Third and five. Five. Doggy wide open. Touchdown, J.J. Stokes. and J.J. Stokes, nobody within 15 yards. 29-yard touchdown. Again, the fake, Barnes to Kevin Williams, and you see just a tremendous play-action fake. The ball's hidden, and Jason Oliver just, he's left hes left in his foot tracks right there. J.J. Stokes right by him for the score. Let me tell you something about Barnes. He's hanging in there because he's getting hit after he's releasing. Barnes has got some salt to him the last few weeks, doesn't he? J.J. Stokes, Absolutely. another touchdown. Six plays, 69 yards, and the kick is good. And all of a sudden, the Bruins creeping back into it. 31, 24, 12, 49 remaining. And we might have another classic here tonight. Dr. Warren Amoni. Sports Foundation, championing women in sports. Call and see how far you can go. You know our everyday low prices are low. Well, this week they're going even lower. You'll save with base buys throughout the store. So whatever your project is, hurry in today. Go to the base, home base, where prices aren't just low, they're lower.
At Home Base, you know our everyday low prices are low. Well, this week they're going even lower. You'll save with base buys throughout the store. So whatever your project is, hurry in today. Go to the base, Home Base, where prices aren't just low, they're lower. The Dodgers continue their quest for postseason play when the Cincinnati Reds visit Dodgers Stadium for an event-filled weekend series August 15th through the 17th. Friday the 15th, newly inducted Hall of Famer Tommy Lasorda will have his uniform number retired in a special pregame ceremony. Saturday, August 16th, the 39th annual Hollywood Stars Night, celebrities doing battle prior to the 735 Dodger Reds game. Join the fun. Call 213-224-1-HIT. You're watching the best of USC and UCLA football on Fox Sports West 2. Oh, he did. J.J. Stokes, touchdown for UCLA, third touchdown in two weeks. He leads the receiving core in touchdown catches. Only took a minute 54, and that's what UCLA needs. 29-yard TD pass, Barnes to Stokes, wide open J.J. Stokes. And it's that deception, as Tom Ramsey mentioned before we went away, that really was the key to that play. Now this short kick. Going to be taken at the 27. Here comes Conway. Great field position at the 44. That's the chance the Bruins are taking, but they'd rather, I guess, give it up there than have Conway take it back for six. Yeah, but I, think, I think the strategy works. I'm sorry, Bill. Catch you up. I think the strategy works a couple times. Then I think you kick it deep. I think you change it up. You mix it short and deep and let them get into the guessing game. And, Really, that time, getting the ball at the 45-yard uh, line, any offense would love that. Rob Johnson needs to eat up some time and get some points. 31-24. The fullback, Bender, not going anywhere. Maybe a couple in Kosey Littleton. Rides him down for UCLA, West Bender. SC trying to use the fullback tonight, really just in, in a spot duty, and both Bender and Mooney Getting the ball a little bit unexpectedly once in a while, but cracking off a carry on first down. This time, not a big game for the Trojans. Bonds and Maddox, a couple of old Bruin quarterbacks. We've got one in the booth. Johnny Morton, ridden out of bounds by Donnie Edwards. Very close to a first down. There's Johnny Morton, not a burner. Has great hands. Maddox and Bonds were truly friends during their time here at UCLA together. And really the best of friends, Jim Bonds and Wright. Of course, Maddox just will face a tough Raider defense tomorrow. Seems to relish that opportunity, <laughs> however. The measurement far side, very, very close. You see maybe a couple of inches after Johnny Morton made the catch. Last year, Morton Nessie's top receiver. Conway's got him beat in the numbers department this year. Eighth all-time on the career list is Johnny Morton. Currently third in the Pac-10 yardage and fifth in catches. But this time, it's a running sitch. Uation for USC. 12.09 remaining in the game. 31-24. SC on top. Trojans on third down. Johnson on the keeper. That's been an effective play for him. He scored a touchdown on it. And SC's got a first down inside the 45. And after they move the chains, the clock will roll. Well, you saw how quickly UCLA was able to strike against the Trojan defense. And, you know, the kick, when you get the ball at the 45-yard line, just an amazing philosophy. But... Uh... The Trojans here just marching along. First down, 45. Johnson on the misdirection. Great hit hard at the 41 yard line. Gain of four, and Jameer Miller put an elbow in Esther Creighton, and down he went. There's Jameer Miller. Tall, fast, powerful, capable of dominating and intimidating. Jameer just about says it in a nutshell, doesn't it? Absolutely. Jameer getting a lot of business his way tonight. The counter that time. Crate. Really, offensive line still just trying to knock off one at a time. And that's what it takes against a Bruin defense that's given about 287 yards a game. Fifth best in the conference. What a great conference defensively it is. 
can't remember a year that it's been this strong on defense. Nobody can really rack up the points. However, both teams certainly doing a number tonight. Jericho Quinn stops Creighton. He's short of the first down. Set up a huge third and a long one, maybe two. Creighton, 27 carries, 143 yards. And the last year he had 126 on 21 carries versus the Bruins. So definitely one of the heroes tonight for the Trojans. Rob Johnson, very emotional, very emotional quarterback. But uh, can keep it under control, shows pretty good judgment whenever he's back there. Creighton. To the whistle bell. Ball is loose. Trojans have it, but now the key is, will they give him progress? Was he stopped? Where are they going to call it? Rob Johnson the officials have been tardy more than a couple of times, Tom. I know you can attest to that. Oh, it's amazing. The official, there's one official on the complete other side of the field trying to spot the ball, but I don't but think that's the case. The now we're just going to wait and see because this will take him out of field goal position, too, you would think. Cole Ford would have to boot one from about 57, and that's where they're going to mark it. Loss of three yards. It'll be fourth down. Well, I tell you what. Creighton had the first down. It appeared though Creighton had the first down and forward progress was stopped and all of a sudden the ball came loose. It's hard to say. I mean, he's wrapped up by a host of Bruins. The ball does pop out. Whether the whistle blows, it's amazing. The referee's really uh, not on the spot tonight. But uh, again, a, a play that definitely does not benefit the Trojans. Good play by Rob Johnson. Mike Chalinski is uh, hurt. Chad LaRose is now back for UCLA at the 10-yard line with La Chapelle hurting. And Stonehouse will kick. Now the Bruins were just a touchdown down and 9.44 to play. They get the football again. LaRose does not represent much of a, uh, a threat running this kick back. In fact, he's going to let it go. Close. Did the Trojans stop it? He's into the end zone. I think that'll be a touchdown. It will be. Touchdown. Trojans very close. And once again, one official was going to mark it, and the other said touchback. Hopefully they'll get it together, but this one's coming back to the 20, where UCLA will have it when we come back. Honda 97 clearance has arrived. And just when you could use a new car, timing is everything, isn't it? 24 SC. Well, let's take a look at USC's attempt to down the punt at the one. You see the ball, Louise was down there, number 46, and makes a good play, jumps up. But you see, right there, he's in yeah, the end he, zone. he's standing on the end line, and anytime that happens, it's a definite touchback. So a good call by the officials. Barnes, 13 for 25, 222 yards and two TDs. How about that? On first down, Barnes gets rid of it. Good play to the 32, 34 yard line. JJ Stokes, who's already caught two touchdown passes. Beat Gerald Henry that time. 14 yards and a Bruin first down. Boy, just a great pitch and catch. Barnes, who pump faked and then just stood firm in the pocket, threw a nice ball to Stokes, and then Stokes had a nice little move and got a few extra yards. John Barnes, the fourth starting quarterback, one of four starting quarterbacks, rather, this year for UCLA. Cook, Walker, and Keen are the other ones. Bruins out of the shotgun on first down. Trojans coming. Complete. Single coverage. Stokes has got it. 40. 30. Stokes still on his feet to the seven-yard line. First and goal, UCLA. All right here, Barnes again standing in the pocket. Just a short little crossing route to Stokes. And 
the guy can do marvels. Once he has the ball, he really gained a huge amount of confidence a week ago. Ten receptions against the Ducks, and right there, just making a great play on pass and catch, and a great run afterwards. That's one of those plays that if the Bruins win, will be replayed for a long time. J.J. Stokes, first and goal, UCLA, SC digging in. Brian Allen in motion. Kevin Williams cuts back inside, down to the four-yard line where the Trojans stack him up. SC called upon now to make a stand, leading 31 to 24. Eight minutes, clock running. There's Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams really didn't have a didn't, didn't have a lot of room to run that time, but it made a nice little move, and you see him just knife up the field, just trying to gain every precious yard he could. Second and goal, UCLA. Khalif Carter in along with Kevin Williams. Bruins will try to run it again. Williams driving down at the one. Watch the power of Kevin Williams as he drives for the goal line. David Webb was there to help make the stop for Troy. Nielsen comes around, gets a block on Cobb, but Pace is right there to hold him up, but Williams is driving down to the one-yard line. Third down for the Bruins at the one. Third and goal. Crowd, the entire Rose Bowl on its feet. Trojans trying to stop him. And we're going to have a timeout, I believe, called by UCLA. Timeout. Well, the referee says it's my timeout right now. This has quieted the place. It will be a UCLA timeout. UCLA that time, Terry Donahue sending in Chris Alexander, the extra tailback right here, number 33, to run in and get called timeout in front of the referee. I'm going to go one play ahead. Let's say the Trojans stop them. Do you go for it on fourth down or do you kick a three? Well, I think you go for it in this situation. I don't. I hate looking ahead like that, but uh, <laughs> especially after they call timeout. I mean, what you what you have here, you burned a timeout that you probably need later on. It's it's quite early, still 7:08 left in the fourth quarter. But if they don't, I think you get close enough right now. Maybe you're an inch or two away. You still go for it on fourth. Fourth quarter scoring for both SC and UCLA. Take a look. They both benefit in the fourth, and opponents hell. SC's only allowed 24 in the fourth. Now Larry Smith, with one of the best defenses in the country, unquestionably has one of the best defenses in the country. And they have stopped the Bruins twice here on a goal-to-goal -goal situation, but now it's down at the one. And the Bruins have Khalif Carter, you would suspect Khalif Carter leading the way if they give it to Williams. USC, total defense, ninth in the Pac-10, but I just, don't read numbers. I just had to point that out. Don't read know. numbers. They got one of the best defenses in the country. I, I, I mean, that's, would, that, I, that's one of the most mis, misconceived things when you look at the numbers because you can go top to bottom in the Pac-10, really, and say that any of those defenses are some of the best in the country. Absolutely. You're the defense without a right. doubt in the Pac-10. A, a great group, and as we said earlier, a great speed defense. Guys that can run all over the field. Let me temper my statement by saying they have had some games where they haven't looked great. San Diego State, Stanford, but when it's really meant a lot, SC has come up with some huge plays defensively, and they're going to ask them to do it right Right here. John Barnes brings him up. Carter and Williams in the backfield. Third and goal for UCLA. Seven minutes left. Trojans up by a touchdown. Kevin Williams. Dives. Touchdown UCLA. for Williams to run through. Well, the Bruins right here, Barnes to Kevin Williams, and Williams just jumps right over the Trojan defense. Nobody home, Brian Williams, a couple of yards deep in the end zone, getting pushed back, and Williams again, just running downhill, right off tackle right there. Vaughn Parker pushing him out of the way. All right, big extra point, Luis Perez. Going to be the snap, Mark the hold, and it is good, and we're tied at 31. We wouldn't want it any other way, folks. SC and UCLA, 31, 31, seven minutes left in a roaring Rose Bowl. And the fans that didn't come to fill it up 
are missing something special again. And all of a sudden, things happening late, just like they did a couple of years ago right here. Absolutely. The fireworks never end. And, you know, again, it's such a prideful game. The seniors going out for a lot of them. UCLA, it's their final game against SC, the same across town. And SC, of course, has a big game in a week against Notre Dame, but you can throw all that out the window because this is the game that counts right now. Now what do you do if you're UCLA? You've been kicking short all game long to the 30, to the 35. You don't want... Of course, Curtis to go all the way, Curtis Conway. Courtney Kyler will kick it off, which lets me to believe that they might try to kick it deep. There's the scoring drive, five plays, 80 yards. Boy, did they get it done quick. Of course, the huge play, the 59-yard pass and catch Barnes to Stokes. They're going to chance it. And here comes Curtis Conway. Out to the 32-yard line. Rob Johnson will be the quarterback. Donovan Gallatin made the stop now sc isn't behind but they've done some wonderful things in the fourth quarter this year three times they've come from behind to win games in the fourth so they've been able to get it done late specifically i'm uh, thinking about a couple of games california oklahoma where they played very well late in the game arizona they also came from behind on first down johnson Throws over the middle, incomplete. He was looking for Larry Wallace at midfield. I tell you what, awfully dangerous throw by Rob Johnson, throwing back across the grain into the teeth of the Bruin defense and really threw it high. Really not a great ball right there. He overthrows Banta, but maybe the ball was going to Wallace and Othello right there to make the play. It'll be second down for the Trojans. At the 33-yard line, second and 10 with 6.53 remaining. Rob Johnson. Will throw again. Has time. Going deep. Incomplete again. Threw in a double coverage on the post. Othello Henderson. They were looking for Conway. Third down and 10. Boy, Carlton Gray making an All-America play right there on another All-America, Curtis Conway, and they're trying to get the post deep, and you see the ball's batted, and then Othello Henderson just rocks Conway's world. Boy, just a double hit right there, and just trying to find the post down the middle of the field, and Carlton times it out great, and then Conway really takes a tremendous hit by Othello Henderson. For the Trojans. 31, 31, six and a half to play. Johnson with time again. Over the middle. Complete at midfield and down to the 45-yard line. It's Curtis Conway. A huge third down conversion for SC. 23 yards and a first down. Boy, a huge play. They give a lot of credit to Rob Johnson. He hung in there, but nice ISO right here. Curtis Conway breaks it down and coming underneath Johnny Morton. You see the ball a little high again, but Conway going right where the ball's coming from. You're going to see Rob Johnson takes a hit by Shalinsky wow. and Jameer Miller. Wow. That's what you have to do if you're going to be a successful quarterback at any level. Stand amidst the rush. First and ten. The fullback. Bruce Walker right there. It'll be second down. Clock moving under six minutes, and Bruce is back. Again, SC trying to sneak the fullback in on first down, and big Bruce Walker there to put a stop on Bender. And again, you use what got you there. And for Larry Smith this year, it's been the pass. And you can bet Johnson will be throwing here on second down and nine from the 43. Yanni Jackson in motion. Johnson, under pressure! Jameer Miller! And the Trojans right here, they tried to get a little cute run a bootleg. And Jameer Miller not being fooled. He's coming awfully hard off the corner to Yasa Sobel, unable to get the block on Miller. And 
Miller takes a swipe at Rob Johnson's head and just ducks out of the way. First sack for UCLA. What a time to get it. SC in a clutch situation. At their own 49, they got to get down to the 34. Johnson, shotgun. Under pressure again. Out of the pocket. He's going to go down at the 44-yard line. Actually out of bounds. And look out, look out. Now's not a time for either team to get a personal foul penalty. <laughs> either team. I Boy. just have to laugh because if you had a microphone down there, I'm sure you'd you say, hey, guys want to come over for dinner? Yeah. Rob was rolling left. Little chance to throw the ball at this point. He was committed to running the football right here. Yeah, well, Quinn right there stops him from throwing, jumps up in his face, and Kip Lawhorn is a fellow that brings him out of bounds and tosses him, creates a little havoc on the sidelines down there. 4.50 remaining, and Stonehouse will come on and punt. Now remember La Chapelle. There's Lawhorn. He's hurt. La Chapelle out of the game. LaRose is back there. And you would bet that LaRose isn't going to touch the ball if it's near him. Well, I think if he has a chance, well, he'll he catch it outside the 10-yard line without a doubt. If it's inside the 10, it's inside the, right. he's going to let it go. He yeah, don't want to let anything go through. And this is a, a, an easy decision for him. We'll see if the Trojans can cover it. What a sensational play for SC. We're going to take a break. When we come back, the Bruins with the ball 99 yards away from the end zone. I'm so Sport utility vehicles are loaded with quality and value. The 97 RAV4 is fun to drive. The rugged 4Runner can handle any road. And the Land Cruiser is tough and luxurious. Buy or lease, there's low financing to fit any budget. So see your Toyota dealer today. I'm sold, I'm sold on you. The road looks level, but your car suddenly strains like it's going uphill. Could be your transmission slipping. This is problem a mountain or a molehill. Stay cool. The expert technicians at Amco Centers have state-of-the-art diagnostic tools to straighten things out. And half the cars serviced by Amco Centers don't need a new transmission. So if your car feels like it's going uphill, bring it to someone who's on the level. Amco, AA, MCO. got my Discover card statement. Well, I write, but a lot of people don't realize I make wonderful pictures, too. And what I do is I paint on acetate with India ink. I went into Barnes & Noble one time and bought three books I myself had written. <laughs> and I, I presume I got a royalty as, as well as the bonus from Discover card. How many credit cards make a statement like that? It pays to discuss. I think that's me. Use it where you see the Nova sign. You're watching the best of USC and UCLA football on Fox Sports West 2. We are back. Ball's going to be spotted at the four. That's where it was originally touched. Although it was downed at the one, it's touched at the four. Yeah, Luizzi right there, he touches it. Right there, they spot it where it's touched. Not where it's brought down or fall fallen upon. SC, three timeouts. UCLA, two timeouts. Look at John Barnes. You know when I said UCLA quarterbacks weren't going to throw 300 yards? Barnes is five oh. yards away from it. Two touchdowns. 4.41 to play. We're tied at 31. Two in the backfield behind Barnes. Give it up to Kevin Williams. Trying to get some room. Stopped cold by SC. Mike Hens leads the charge for the Trojans. And Stephon Pace. Getting those Trojan fans in the end zone fired up. It'll be second down. Yeah, right there, Hens really put a nice stop that time on Williams. Three 
wide receivers now in for the Bruins out of the shotgun. Bruins were down by 14 points a little while ago. Great comeback for UCLA. Inside handoff. Up the middle. To the 8, to the 9, to the 10. Goes Kevin Williams. Willie McGinnis. The stop. UCLA really succeeding in their game plan and what they wanted to do, come out throwing and really back back SC up out of their blitz package. And right now, any nickel situation, the Trojans electing not to come, electing to go into pass coverage. Third down, four for UCLA. Let's see if the Trojans bring some people here. From under center, Barnes. Straight drop. Over the middle. Walk it up. He's got it now. Caught by Stokes. Stokes at the 40. Stokes at the 30. Stokes. Touchdown, UCLA. Woo. Man. 90 yards. Unbelievable. In the lore of USC and UCLA, Barnes to Stokes will be a common place. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of Stokes in the years to come, but right here, John Barnes, not a lot of pressure again. He beats his man, number 26, Gerald Henry, but he not only beats Henry right here, he puts a little move on him. Is he Luis Perez good for the extra point, but he also outruns Jason Oliver, another sprint guy, but you see Stokes. This is what happens when you have a gambling defense like SC. You get this one-on-one -on -one and Stokes just beats his man. Well, the, the gamble here is you got a guy 5'8 against a guy 6'5. And I take the guy 6'5 any day over the guy 5'8. And Stokes just able to run past him and then puts a little move on him and just shakes off Oliver, but more dramatically just dragging him over for the six-pointer. J.J. Stokes, Woo. six catches, 265 yards. Look at John Barnes. Three TDs for Stokes. There's 3.08 to play. We're not done. The Trojans are going to get the ball. 38-31. Remember when the Trojans had 21 unanswered? UCLA has done it right back. You know, it's something. The last set of series for SC, I thought they went to the pass a little early. This time, they're forced to go to it. But I really thought the last series of downs, they'd come out and rush the football a little bit and take some time off the clock, something they didn't do. And in case you weren't with us at the start, last year at the Coliseum, John Barnes, a transfer from UCSB, snuck into the Coliseum <laughs> using his girlfriend's ID. Now, he's playing the game. He's got him on top. Trojans Conway's got him. Curtis down at the 30-yard line. Donovan Gallatin again. Look oh. at these numbers for John Barnes. 385 yards on 16 completions. Big plays, big plays, and more big plays. Yeah, Barnes real close to 409, set by Maddox two years ago. And you know the most interesting thing of this entire evening, if you would ask anybody that follows football in Southern California this week, they'd say it's going to be low scoring, it's going to be a defensive struggle, and if you feel like said, going to win, absolutely. it can't be a shootout. Now the Trojans have Throw it all forever, out the forever absolutely. to come back. 3-0-3, let's see if they can do it. Rob Johnson looking for a miracle finish for SC. Out of the pocket. Johnson throws. Got his man. Incomplete. Incomplete at the 44. Travis Hanna was there. The 5'8 senior. Looks like they had a little fix-up on the play. They were motioning Conway out. Looks as though Rob Johnson snapped the ball a little early. And he just wasn't in the right formation where they wanted to be. But the numbers on J.J. Stokes, honestly, just incredible. Honestly, Six receptions. Tom, not a bad average. One of the greatest performances I've ever Absolutely. seen. Absolutely. From Without a wide a receiver at any level. Yeah because of the way he has run with the football and the clutch catches that he's made. But the Trojans have three wides in the game. Conway, the big play guy in motion. Carlton Gray following it. Wow, the throw, knocked down. 
London Woodfin for UCLA. 253 left and a big third down coming up for SC. Let me pose the question to Bill McDonald. Does SC go for it on fourth down after maybe not getting it on third? They've down? got three timeouts remaining, and with their defense, I I punt the ball. Although I know SC followers, I know this because I've been sitting in the seats as an SC student. They'll probably <laughs> say, go for it. We'll wait and see. We're not at that point yet. London Woodman with a great play. Uh, they were trying to get the ball to Conway again. Just a little delay route. And London Woodman breaking it up. 38-31 UCLA. Fourth quarter. 253 left. Trojans third down and 10 at their 31. Out of the shotgun. Rob Johnson over the middle. Caught. Strugger down at the 35. It'll be a fourth and five. Donovan Gallatin, a good play, and it looks as though Rob Johnson's just staying right on the field. Yeah, absolutely. Four down, 236, and time running. I think you really you can't afford to give the ball away right here. It's going to take a while to get down the field. They really haven't been down the field deep for a while, and when they have, they've made the plays. The Bruins have made the plays. Right there, I'm sure, yes, he's probably going to call a timeout here. They got 12 on the 25 second clock. They're going to keep it. They're gonna, they better hurry. It's at seven, and they're going to have to call a timeout. So the Trojans, I'm sure, didn't want to burn one right here. Was it UCLA that called it? That would have been a, a mistake for the Bruins because they just let SC off the hook if that's the case. And UCLA did call the timeout. Boy, SC was in trouble right there. The play clock was down to seven. They weren't at the line, but UCLA burns the timeout. We know you're not going anywhere. See you in a minute. Those three touchdowns. Six receptions. 38-31 UCLA. We've got 2-10 to play. There's a new single game record for UCLA and a congratulations to number 18. But now, the Trojans. Probably got a, a gnat in his eye as he was running. Rob Johnson brings him up on fourth down. SC needs it. Do I need to say any more? SC does have all three timeouts though. SC comes out with one wide receiver. Fourth and five, Conway in motion. Johnson has time, throws, complete, and very close to a first down. This is going to be a spot for the ages right here. Woo! Well, I'm surprised SC had Conway and a couple tight ends, but Yanni Jackson gets the call there. I'll tell you what, this is going to be a couple of inches one way or another. Yanni Jackson brought down by Marv Goodwin. And Larry Smith now can only watch the chains come out. Will he have a new set of downs? Yes, he will. Trojans, first down. Well, you see the attention Curtis Conway gets. And really so much focus on him. They drag the tight end underneath. Just a great call. Coach Ray Dorn. You see him, Marv Goodwin dragging him down. Gallatin just comes in just a shade late. That's a great effort by Jackson. Oh, absolutely. Stretched it out there at the end to get the first down by about a football. First and 10, Trojans out of the shotgun. Wide receivers are split. We've got a minute 50, clock running. Johnson looking, throwing, incomplete. Well short of his intended target, Johnny Morton. Minute 43 remaining, UCLA up by seven. It'll be second down and 10. You think of heroics, you remember back to Johnny Morton, of course, he's still on the field for USC, the junior. Johnny Morton got his nickname from this game. From this Big game. Play. Big play in the big USC-UCLA game a couple of years back, and he'd like to do it again. From the 41, second and 10. SC just converted a big fourth down to keep it alive. Johnson, here's Conway. Well, that's Hanna. Travis Hanna cutting in. That's a very Curtis Conway type move cutting in. And as I saw the jersey coming in, I figured it was Conway, but it was Travis Hanna. Exactly. They run the same play with Conway. One of the ways to get him the ball, but Hanna right there. This little underneath screen. And SC letting a lot of time run off the clock here. Minute 21. Remember, SC mismanaged the clock in the first half. Johnson throws incomplete. Fourth down again. In Kosey Littleton. Donnie Edwards, one of the Bruins down on the field right now. 
SC still has all three timeouts. It'll be fourth down. Ken Johnson pull another one out. He just converted to Yanni Jackson on the last set of downs on a fourth down and five. This will be fourth and about three from the 48. And if you're watching this replay on Prime Ticket tonight, Saturday, you can catch it again tomorrow at 11.30. So if you can't get enough of the game and you're watching it on Saturday, we'll have it for you again on Sunday. And what a game for John Barnes. Literally, folks, out of nowhere this year for UCLA. I bet you one nine's mom watches it. <laughs> bet you one nine does too. Win or lose this game. And SC. Worried. Fourth down. And three. Curtis Conway, top of your screen. Fourth and three. Johnson, great protection. He's going for it. Johnny Martin has it down inside the 15. Johnny Martin burned Robert Gamble. 39 yards. First down, SC. We've got a minute eight remaining. Oh, it's amazing. Johnny Morton just comes up with another huge play. And fourth and three. I'm wondering why Johnson's throwing the ball down the field. But right there, he spots Johnny Morton, who beat Robert Gamble. Just inside. And he does get one foot in, and that's all you need. You know what I'm thinking back to right now? 1982. A two-point conversion at the end of the game to win or lose for SC. It might come down to that again. Scott Tinsley sacked by Carl Morgan. Tom Ramsey's last big game. SC UCLA. Let's see if the Trojans can get it in the end zone. Johnson scrambling. He's got room to run. Johnson out of bounds at the one. Rob Johnson is out of bounds at the one yard line. 59 seconds left. Wow, Rob Johnson making just a great play from a young quarterback. He looked to his left, there was nothing there. All of a sudden, he saw all the pursuit, all the angles. UCLA completely on the other side of the field, and Rob Johnson just trying to sky over, but he doesn't get inside the flag. They mark him at Boy. the one. Wow. Again, again, of course, you can't tell from television, but again, it looked like Johnson dove over the cone on first down. Deion Struther was short. The clock's going to continue to run. SC says, let's just let it run. Now we have a stoppage. I don't think there was a loose football. The way they're, the way they're looking for it, we might have a fumble. If we have a fumble, I believe SC's got it. Timeout USC. So... We had a fumble in the air, Deion Struther. You see Struther tries to go up and over. Othello Henderson comes from his safety position, just puts a hammer on him. Boy, oh, the ball's out. Boy, we do have a fumble. From where we were watching live action, just impossible to see. But then the scramble at the end, there it is. Carlton Gray, number three, with the huge hit on Struther. Remember last year there was a similar play where all of a sudden nobody knew where the ball was. Brian Allen came out with it for a touchdown for UCLA. Yeah, Carlton Gray, number three there with the big hit on Struther. And an Othello coming in. It's amazing. 48 seconds it's left. They're looking for Rob Johnson to sneak this one. They don't want to hand off, that's for sure. On second down, Struther is the tailback. Wes Bender is the fullback. SC needs a touchdown to tie Johnson. And we will wait. Again, we will wait. And the clock runs while we wait. Touchdown, USC. Right here, a win propels you to get a uh, actually a two-point conversion if they decide to go for it. They Rob Johnson true share of the championship. Rob Johnson three touchdowns. Rob think, Johnson really sneaking right in behind number 53 Robert Loya. I think he, I think you got to go for two here. You've got to go for two. Win the ball game. And they're talking to Rob Johnson now. We saw Cole Ford running down, but you play to win the game. 
and they're going for two. 11 plays, 69 yards. There's 41 seconds left. It's 38-37. UCLA up by one. This will be a two-point conversion. The ball will be at the three-yard line, left hash. And again, remember, I'm thinking back to 1982. And, and on a two-point conversion, remember, USC can elect to place the ball wherever it would like, either hash mark or in the middle of the field. They put it on the left hash, utilizing uh, the right formation to the field. Here's where all the hours in the film room pay off for one team. Obviously, Bob Field and his defensive people scrambling to think, what are the tendencies? What would the Trojans do in this situation? And vice versa, Larry Smith thinking to pull a fast one on the UCLA defense. Oh, just, just an amazing series of downs. Johnson finding Morton down the sideline and then Strother coughing the ball up, but SC retaining possession. And then Rob Johnson going over from a few inches out. And then to be faced with this. 41 seconds left. It has been a sensational game again. Another classic in the USC UCLA series and the tension on both sides. Right a week ago, SC faced with a two-point conversion against the University of Arizona, and Rob Johnson sprinted out to the far side of the field, to the right side, and found Conway in the corner of the end zone, who ran a comeback route. So GCLA's seen that one on film. They probably won't come to it, but uh, SC 2 of 4 on two-point conversions this year. Rick Neuheisel, Terry Donahue. All they can do now is watch, and so can Larry Smith. The defensive calls have been made, and here we go. Now the ball is in the middle of the field. 38, 37, 41 seconds left. This is for two. And now the Bruins might call the timeout. I think the Bruins is playing the cat and mouse game. I, I wouldn't do that. I'll tell you why. I'd save my timeouts. I would save my timeouts for if Real I went point. behind. Real good point. I, I know yeah. you want to make the defensive call, but you may have to get the ball in field goal position and you don't want to waste the timeout and now UCLA is out of timeout so obviously Terry Donahue putting everything into this two-point conversion that's right good point Bill 38 37 now we just wait again UCLA playing that game uh, I want to see what you come out with similar in basketball on an out-of-bounds play let me see what you're gonna show and then I'll call a timeout and try to defense it. Yeah. Now, does SC turn around and call another play? Right, yeah, I mean, if you look at it that way or get at least somebody to second guess on the bench, then you've accomplished what you wanted to do, but I think it's good. You know, they wanted to look at the personnel. They see it, Conway's out, two tight ends. AJ? Well, so similar to the game two years ago, the fourth quarter has been absolutely incredible football. Both SC and UCLA up and down the field. 41 seconds remain, and remember, this is for two points and to give SC the lead. Rob Johnson wants it so badly, as he said all week long, wants to beat UCLA, and he's got it in his own hands right here. Out of the offset eye, Conway in motion. Johnson has all kinds of time. Now it breaks down, throws, incomplete! Well, it was the same play they, they went to on the first fourth down early on in the drive. They ran Conway in motion, they tried to get the ball underneath uh -oh. to let Jackson. Me, let me tell you what just happened, and this may play into SC's hands. While all the commotion and celebrating is going on, Carlton Gray just threw his helmet, rather in elation, or in disgust or whatever, and a flag is thrown, and that's gonna go 15 for SC on the kick. And of course, SC is gonna try an onside kick. So if SC recovers, boom, immediately, they're gonna be closer to field goal range. So a silly play by Carlton Gray. Yeah, they actually- his helmet in elation. Yeah, yeah, exactly, the, the flag for the yeah. elation. It is, tough, it is tough to control your emotions in this, any game, especially in this series, it's, of course, a moot point if UCLA recovers, but right. uh, here's the two-point Exactly right here again. They try to delay underneath the Yanni Jackson, and right there in Kosi is a fellow that makes the play, stepping in front of Yanni Jackson, and right there, Bruins celebrate. 
Hey, I'm going to rip out a cliche. It ain't over. SC is going to have an onside kick attempt, and they're going to get 15 yards. Well, they're right. Gonna they're going to kicking gonna, off exactly, the field. They're, they're kicking off from the 50, although for UCLA, they practice a hands team all the time. I don't think it's as, you know, a lot of times, it's interesting. It, it will come down well, to the wire for sure. Yeah, but, uh, the, the yardage doesn't play into, of course, whether you're going to recover it or not. It's, it's If you do recover it, all of a sudden you're in great position. Yeah, but they still facing, you know, a long way to go. If they do recover it, I mean, they still got 40 to go, so you still have ample opportunity. UCLA has a great chance. I think defensively, they have their best players on the field. SC only has one timeout. So if UCLA recovers the football, game over. It's 38-37. UCLA over USC. And I respect SC for going for two points there. They really showed a lot of gumption right there. Playing for the conference championship, a share of it. Hey, we're only up here announcing, but I'll tell you what, you have to do it. You go for two. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Cole Ford will kick. Onside time. Can SC pull another one out? From the 50. There's UCLA, as you said, Tom, their hands team down to the 40. Ford, and it is recovered by the Brewers at the 38-yard line. Game over, UCLA. And in Westwood, you might as well start up the party. Well, UCLA with a winning record. They ended up 6-5. and five. And they really do play the role of a spoiler. Mike Wynn, the fellow on the hands team who catches the ball, number 81, and really one of the best guys out there you'd want. Sure-handed, falling on top of the ball. And UCLA appears to get off the map this year, win their last three, and go home with a 6-5 and five record. And what an incredible storied comeback for UCLA. SC can only stop it once. Barnes on a knee. SC will call their final timeout. UCLA 37 seconds away from taking the Crosstown Showdown in 1992 in an improbable, improbable comeback. Well, you gotta look at it now. Maybe UCLA does have a chance for a bowl. They've won the required six games. And a game Division like 1A to get to a bowl game. And, and a, a game like this going over the country on national television, you got to be thinking, hey, UCLA is an attractive team. Absolutely. Quite possibly an outside shot. But USC you, knocking off Arizona. Arizona losing. You can't shut out Washington State from a bowl, however. UCLA was kind of jockeying with Washington State. Right. The Cougars beat Washington. They beat UCLA. And they finished a couple of games ahead of the Bruins. So they're obviously not going to unseat it, Washington exactly. State. Exactly. And SC will still go to a bowl game, although it's been a great game. Played hard fought. UCLA it really makes UCLA season and this really solidifies I think the Freedom Bowl for USC and I know Don Anderson and the Freedom Bowl committee have got to be dancing but the Trojans certainly aren't down goes Barnes they'll count it down at the Rose Bowl and you will see a tremendous celebration well warranted if you're a UCLA fan and for Larry Smith this is going to be one of the toughest ones to lose in this series. Terry Donahue. John Barnes says, it's mine. Don't ever take it away. <laughs> and we'll count it down at the Rose Bowl as they carry TD off to a victory. That's right. Big win for Coach Donahue. Hats off to John Barnes. It's all over. UCLA 38. USC 37. Right, baby, yeah. take a break be back with more from the Rose Bowl 38 37 this year it belongs to the Bruins